Oh, hey, it's you. We got, listen, we gotta, we gotta have a little talk, me and you. Listen, guys, pay attention. Eyes here, right here. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you doing? Will, how are you? Hello, everyone. How is everybody doing tonight on this night, the day after Valentine's Day? Let me give you all a word of advice for next year's Valentine's Day. If you're going to order, if you're going to order your girl or your boy, uh, Starbucks, Mm. Don't get it after 7 p.m. because then you'll be up till two in the morning. You telling telling you telling people not to have coffee at, after seven? Yes. <laughs> I mean the thing I'm doing right now, yo. I just so listen. Really? If you want a if you want a well, froth, cold coffee, you put a little milk in it, and you put it in a jar, and you shake the shit out of it, and it, look at that foam. Look at that foam. I just shook it. That's all I did. See, the thing is. I don't have to tell you not to have coffee after seven because you're going to do it anyway because you're built differently than normal people. <laughs> no, I'm not. I just wake up at three in the afternoon. <laughs> Most this of is, us can't do that. This is midday for me. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, thank you, Cosmic Anime, for the raid. Thank you, X Shiro X, for the Prime subscription. Uh, I was, I, I left the starting student screen on for a little bit longer because I was making my coffee and I decided to make it iced because I already had a hot one. I've been having two coffees a day, Will. I don't know if you know this. I am wired. Really? Only two? Only, it's, it's, people think, like, I like coffee, so people think that that's all I drink is coffee. But I usually only have one a day. I've been on a two coffee a day situation. Really? Because I, I, I'm usually like three <laughs> wow also also so i yeah. drink lattes it's a double shot of espresso espresso is a more highly concentrated caffeine content however you drink less espresso so in a latte there's actually more caf- there's less caffeine in a latte than there is in regular coffee also mm. also my lattes are only eight ounces so they're very tiny so yeah. Like if you get a medium at Starbucks or whatever, that's going to have a lot. So basically me having two coffees, it's like me having a regular Starbucks coffee like one a day. If you think about it. If yeah. you if you round it out, that's I'm just trying to justify it to myself. Well. <laughs> anyway, uh so, somebody in the chat because I said we're coming, somebody said Bob threw up again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, guys, nothing happened this week because last week we had a, a big, we had a big Nintendo Direct, big Nintendo announcement. So this week, nothing. It was it's like shockingly bad this week. <laughs> Literally nothing. Also, yeah, we just did the podcast six days ago. Yes, but like you would think that there would be something in between those six days. In betwixt. Yeah, nothing. No, literally nothing. Like there, happened. There's news. There's news, but like there's nothing earth shattering. There's nothing Not- amazing to talk about. Nothing you gotta nothing that'll knock your socks off. Right. Uh what happened to the Steam Deck story? I thought you put the Steam Deck story in here. I thought I have, the, I have the I fix it tear down. Oh yeah. I, I'm thinking of the that other is, one. That is the story, yeah. Okay. We're moving that to the top, baby. Oh, and also the uh, the the Sonic. There's a lot of Sonic news. Gotta move that. Well, there's one big Sonic news that I put in there. Yeah, and then that'll that'll spin off to the other Sonic news. Guys, we decided today we're gonna do a fun little game. We're gonna do a fun thing. We are yes. going to rank in a tier list every online gaming platform. So we're talking. Yes. Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation Plus, Nintendo Switch Online, all those jobbies, we're putting them all against each other. Because we always do that. Yep. Now we'll have a definitive list of that. We always like touch on it. Now we'll know for certain which ones are garbage and which ones yes. are great and what the others can aspire to be. How about that? So I, I uh, we have a list here. Uh, but I haven't actually made it into a tier list. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do that. You know, while you do that, I should probably like, pull up exactly what these services offer. 
because mm-hmm. I can think of at least two that don't really justify their existence in this day and age. Yeah, so there, there's some that we just learned about today. Mm-hmm. I didn't know Uplay Plus was a thing. It's also Ubisoft well, that nobody Uplay cares was about around, that. and I guess like Plus is like, you know, their Plus model. Oh, oh, yeah. Is that what that is? Cool. Good, good to know. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, what should we? What do we want to start with? Uh, I guess should we start with? I don't know. Should we start with uh, Xbox Live Gold and PlayStation Plus? All right. So here's the question, though. Yes. I think we also have to include Xbox Ultimate. And also, 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 is there even a gold anymore? Yes, because like, you, st- you can still get gold separate of Game Pass. How? Because they, they serve two different functions. Oh, wait. Breaking yeah. news. Okay. As of late March 2023, Nintendo will no... Nintendo will make it no longer possible to make eShop purchases from the Wii U or Nintendo 3DS family of systems. All right, put that in the, put that as a story somewhere. Right. <laughs> that's not it's not it's not that important. Well, I <laughs> I'm going on, I was I was Twitter loaded up and that was the first thing that came up. So, I mean, that's a big deal because, you know, systems are dying. Oh, and also, they just got a, a new game came out on the Wii U last week on the eShop. Also, Rick MSGT posted Capcom Games the Countdown. It's the countdowns for five days. What the fuck is there to talk about? <laughs> I don't know, man. Everybody <laughs> Who cares? is like hyped. Everybody's Who cares hyped it's got a five-day countdown? It could be literally anything. Everybody's hyped for that countdown. It could be Resident Evil. It could be Capcom. It could be uh, Street Fighter. It could be friggin' uh, Bionic Commando. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, But it was like the only news thing to talk about. So that's where we're at. I thought you can't get gold by itself or you can't get Game Pass by itself. One of them you can't get by itself. um, You can get them individually. Game Pass Uh, Ultimate is just the bundle of the two. I'm attempting to buy Xbox Live Gold right now. Join. I have have Xbox Live Gold. I do not have Game Pass. Interesting. Okay. All right. So I think we have to include Ultimate as a separate thing. Because PlayStation doesn't have one of those currently. Correct. So that might take some points off somewhere, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh... Okay, so why I guess we'll start with gold. What's the what? What do we get? What do we get with gold right now? Uh, f- hold on, I'm trying to figure it out. Well, the big thing with gold is on my multiplayer. That was yes. like the original selling point of not just Xbox Live Gold, Xbox Live in general. Because when Xbox Live launched, it was in order to just use it, you needed to pay. The fifty dollars a year back then to use it on the Xbox 360, they introduced Xbox Live Silver, which was the free version, and then Gold. And Gold got you uh, multiplayer gaming. It got you discounts. It got you, uh, f- I think, a f- a party chat feature, uh, and eventually it got you uh, free games. The free so, games every month. So. Back in the day, we wouldn't consider playing games with other people, like online multiplayer games. We wouldn't consider that that much of a benefit because PlayStation allowed you to do that for free. And also PC allows you to do that for free. There's no right subscription service on on uh, on PC. Yes. Uh, but because you had to pay for Xbox Live Gold the online experience on Xbox was always better than it was on Sony systems and, uh, of course, on Nintendo systems, but that's neither here nor there. 
um, because you were actually paying for a service that they actually, and they used that money for upkeep and maintenance and, you know, just kept building on it from there. Like they actually took your money and put it into and used it to, for resources for Xbox Live. Yeah, and it was uh, it was really it, it was significantly better than than yeah. than PlayStation's. PlayStation back in the day had outages and they had like yeah. hacks that like leaked everybody's information yeah. and like and and the servers were bad. It it, it was it was rough. Um yes. but it's since gotten better. Uh yeah. And I would used to cuz I never really played a lot of online multiplayer, but a lot of the single player games I would play had online components to it. And one time I let my game, my uh, Xbox Live Gold subscription lapse. Mm -hmm. And like it was, uh, it was one of the Need for Speed games. And I let my subscription lapse. And it was a completely different game without online. So for a while, Xbox Live Gold really was like you needed it. It was, you know, very important. And it offered a lot. Nowadays, I don't think Xbox Live Gold is on its own is worth it uh yeah i mean a lot of free-to-play games don't even need it yeah like uh like yeah. i don't think warzone needs it well actually for a while x so for a while free-to-play games what was it on playstation i think you didn't need it playstation you, and nintendo you didn't need it but xbox didn't really play ball it took them a while yeah yes I'm being delivered food. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my god, thank you. I don't I don't even know what this is. <laughs> it's uh it's some sort of egg roll situation. I don't know. Anyway. Nice. Also, I'm frozen. <laughs> yeah, well, leave and come back. All right, goodbye. What are we going to do without Will? All right, I'm back. Oh wow, yay. All right. Hello, Hi, everybody. Uh, what what are the good chat? I need you guys to tell us what the good PC ones are. We only know of Game Pass, really. Yeah, I mean, we have a list of PC ones. Yeah, like but I'm, I'm sure there's ones that we're missing. Yeah. So yeah, Xbox Live Gold on its own really offers multiplayer uh, deals. Uh, free games with gold. And that's it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so Xbox Live on its own. I feel like and and the games with gold that we've been getting the free games is becoming with Xbox Live. They Xbox Live was a great service, but because of Game Pass and because they're running out of games, it's really yeah. not a good service anymore. And the fact that a lot of the g online games that you're gonna want to play don't even require it, like Warzone and Fortnite and that stuff. Um, I feel I'm I'm not wrong on that, right? Like, like I'm pretty sure uh, Warzone you know, doesn't free, require it. Like, well, Fortnite I know doesn't require it because that's a free game, and I, free games don't require free to play games don't require gold. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that Xbox Live is kind of not great anymore. I mean, I mean, you need it if you're gonna play, uh, like, like, I don't know, yeah. the 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 multiplayer of Call of Duty outside of Warzone, but uh, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's that good. I don't think we need it right now. Do you I'm gonna... need it for Halo, for the Halo Infinite multiplayer? No, because it's free to play. Yeah, at least I don't think so. That's what I thought. So I'm gonna put it in uh, C. Yes. May, it, it, things might change as we go forward to these other services because uh, we might learn some things that they have that others don't and stuff. So I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, this is going to be, things are going to be moving around. Uh, let's yeah. continue with Xbox. Let's do Game Pass. Game Pass, I think, is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, Game Pass probably go closer to eight here because it offers so much more than... Uh, games with gold, uh, Xbox Live Gold on its own. This is the fact that you get access to any game you want to play for however much a month. <laughs> this thing I'm eating is hot. It's a bad idea. 
What are you eating again? I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Sam just gave me those. Is just, someone just hands you like, a random plate of something that looks like chicken nuggets. I don't know. There's like egg rolls and there's some sort of like, I think it's like a spinach, like fried triangle. I don't know. Mm. But it's here. It's in front of me now. I feel obligated to eat it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Game Pass is, is, is a monthly subscription that gives you a bunch of free stuff. Uh, not free stuff. Yeah. It gives you a whole collect, like a really large collection of games. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite Did you things. access? Sorry. One of my favorite things about Game Pass is uh, that it is also available for PC. And yes. I have, I've been booting up Halo on basically all of the devices that I have. And it's just, it's seamless. <laughs> and it even includes yeah. streaming. So I, I'd put Halo, I, I, I got Game Pass on my Ein Odin, which is an Android based, uh, you know, emulator. Mm -hmm. uh, I put Game Pass on there. I, I, it took me less than a minute from hitting the download button on Game Pass in the Google Play Store to loading into my save file of Halo. My my account information was just there. It automatically had yeah. my save file, and then I was just right where I left off in Halo. It was fucking awesome. That's that's the future, folks. <laughs> that is the world we should have been living in like five years ago. But that's streaming. So if you want to yeah. put it on your device, it's going to have to download it. That might take a little while longer. So I have the yeah. Aya Neo, which is like a Steam Deck competitor. I did the exact same thing, but I downloaded the game to the system. It's like 30 gigabytes. Uh, and then I just loaded right where I was. And it played. Well, yes. actually, it didn't play that good on the I, on the Aya Neo. <laughs> it got some problems with the Aya Neo. But um, it, yeah, I just... Uh, I also downloaded Forza Horizon 5 because I've been wanting to play that and it just I, I have a Game Pass subscription so it just automatically is just on my console so yeah. uh, I think Game Pass is kind of uh, I think the gold standard of, of streaming services I don't know what else yeah. uh, they could do other than uh, put more games on there yeah so Let's just break down Game Pass for a minute, because technically there are three different versions of Game Pass. Mm -hmm. There's the console Game Pass, there's PC Game Pass, and then there's Ultimate. Uh, console and PC basically have similar features, but they're two separate subscriptions. On both versions, you get uh, over 100 games in your library with new games added all the time. I'm reading off of the official game pass uh website uh xbox game studio titles the same day as release that's a big one that i think people forget mm -hmm. that all first party xbox uh games launch on game pass the same day they're available in retail stores so, yeah, so. if you're the type of per yeah so if you're the type of person you know who you know, maybe has never played a Halo game before and just wants to try it out. If you've already got Game Pass, you can just try it out. It's right there for you. And that's, you know, also for uh, Forza Horizon. That's going to be for Starfield when that comes out. Guarantee to you, them Activision games that they're getting are all going to be on day pa Game Pass day one. You know, that's that's why Microsoft was buying all those studios so they can do, do shit like this. So, so that also... Uh, and, and member discounts and deals. That also may put Halo in a weird spot because uh, people who are, we, we talked about this on the show, people who were reviewing yeah. it were like, um, I mean, Halo is great, but is it a good six, 60 or $70 purchase? Yeah. Uh, not really, because for $1, you can get uh, the first month of Game Pass. You can download the game, beat the single player, and then cancel your subscription and play the multiplayer for the rest of your life for free so yeah. uh that shows both the great value that game pass is and also the weird the weird like world that we're living in right now where where uh where subscription services uh could be a blessing and 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 a curse. In this case, that seems like a blessing, but the curse comes yeah. when you have a billion subscription services and you forget that you have them and you pay for them for, for without thinking about it. Yep, currently doing that with Netflix and Hulu and uh, 
Disney Plus and all this other crap that I'm forgetting. You have the max amount of users on every one of your platforms. No, I think I can still add people to my Hulu. <laughs> I why do I, I have Hulu. Hulu? Don't you use my Hulu? No, I didn't. You get Hulu with Spotify? I did. Oh, does that mean yeah. I can't have users? Oh, I don't know. I, don't, I, I got I don't Hulu either. the old-fashioned way. Well, anyway, uh, Royalty13 in the chat says, PC Game Pass has EA Play. I was going to mention that. Uh, PC Game Pass does have EA Play. Um, but there's Game Pass Ultimate. Right. And Game Pass Ultimate, same deal. Play over 100 high-quality games. Uh, new games added all the time. Xbox Game Studio games uh, released on the same day. Uh, exclusive deals and whatnot. But Ultimate is cross-platform. So so you can play... You don't need a separate uh, subscription for each platform. Game Pass Ultimate encompasses uh, Xbox consoles, PC, and mobile devices. And Ultimate allows you to play games from the cloud. Because remember, Game Pass on its own, you download the games to your system. Ultimate unlocks it from the cloud and that's how you can play games across devices oh. and ultimate subsequently includes ea play for all systems all right so i actually didn't know this i didn't know <laughs> that there were different tiers of game pass yeah so for the regular pc version it's ten dollars for the console version it's ten dollars and for ultimate it's fifteen dollars and how much is yeah. xbox live uh, I think it's supposed to be like $60 a year, but they don't tell you that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's very hard to get a year of Xbox Live Gold on its own. Like, yeah, they do I'll everything they can to make you buy it either a month at a time or three months at a time. $60 for a year. So what's five times 12? That's, uh, I can do math. I can do the 60. That is 60, isn't it? That is yes. 60. Yes. Uh, okay. So you actually, that's not a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only way it's a deal well, is because they make it a pain in the ass to buy it separately. Yeah. Because if you look on the um, on the page, it says uh, gold is in parentheses a nine ninety nine a month value. Yeah. So they want you to think you're spending, you know, they want you to think you're saving, you know, uh, $120 when really you're, you're saving like $60. And to reiterate what you said before, e Ultimate comes with EA Play on PC and console. Yes. Uh, so Ultimate's really the best value because you're getting the PC and console ones. And, yes. and, and you're not really getting a deal on Xbox Live, but it's just it's just part of it. Like you just yeah. you're gonna pay for it anyway. Um, if you're gonna play any multiplayer games online that aren't the free to play ones. Mm -hmm. So uh I th I mean I I can't see you wanting like me personally I want the PC and the console one cuz I want to be able to play these yeah. games on all the different things that I have. Uh does the PC one include like Android? No, just PC. And does the console one include all... Android? <laughs> no, cuz remember on Android that's cloud streaming. Right. Oh, and so these don't include only cloud streaming. On Ultimate. Yes. Right. That's what you just said. Um yep. Okay. So yeah, ultimate I think is the is the the the, the way you gotta do this. It, 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 yeah. Most of the stuff that I would want out of it. I mean, I understand if you have a PC and you just want to play this stuff on your PC, then the PC yeah. version is fine. But there's also certain games that are only streaming. Um but I don't know if if there's if those are like I don't know if a lot of those are gonna be the ones that you guys are gonna want to play. Yeah, um, I mean, it'd be interesting because, I mean, Ultimate, if you don't have a gaming PC and you just have an Xbox, I don't know if Ultimate is necessarily the best option because, like, theoretically, you could just do the console Game Pass on its own and you should be fine. But they really do make Ultimate enticing. <laughs> it depends on the multiplayer games you want to play. Mm -hmm. It also depends on um, whether or not you're ever going to want to stream 
on your phone or on a uh, on a laptop or, or an iPad or something. Yeah. Like if you ever want to do that, then Ultimate is totally worth it. Um, it's even worth it if you just want to play uh, any multiplayer game that's not free to play because yeah. you're getting you're going to have to pay for Xbox Live Gold anyway. But that isn't really like a perk. That's like a that's like a, a strong arm into making you buy it. <laughs> yeah. The real value here is that if you ever want cloud streaming or to play it on PC as well, I guess. Uh so where's my tier list? Here it is. Uh Game Pass and Ultimate. Game Pass. I'm a little disappointed in Game Pass now that I know that it's split between PC and console. Yeah. I would uh, maybe say put Game Pass in B tier. I was just going to say that. Regular, regular Game Pass, and I would put Game Pass Ultimate. You see, I don't know if Game Pass Ultimate is S tier necessarily, because I feel like there's still a lot of kinks that they need to work out with it, but it's like definitely what? A tier. Like what? Because we've been praising it too much. We need to shit on it a little bit. Well, the, the big thing for me is that it's uh, $15 a month, and there's no... Uh, it's only $15 a month. There's no uh, price for the year up front. They mm -hmm. won't let you do that. And I think a lot of people would prefer to pay that way. Um, that is $180 a year. Yeah. I think if they were to allow players to pay all up front, or you know, better yet, offer a discount for buying the whole year, it doesn't even have to be a big discount. It could be like $150 for the year. You know, I think that would entice a lot more people to jump on it you know what i mean as of now 15 dollars a month you know that's for a lot of people that's 15 dollars. you have to allocate specifically for playing games and i did not touch my xbox at all during january so i don't mm -hmm. know if game pass ultimate would have been the right option for me I, I like to do this thing where i get a new device or i download something and just open mm -hmm. it for two seconds and go, wow, I can do that, and then never touch the actual game. And I've been doing that yeah. a lot with Xbox Game Pass. So I use Game Pass, <laughs> but I don't actually ever play anything with Game Pass. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave it in A tier. However, I think once we get through this, it's going to move up to S tier because we're going to realize everything else sucks. Everything else sucks, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Especially compared to that. Yeah, and again, it's got Game Pass. Part of what makes it great is that it has a lot of the the, the games that you're going to want to play anyway. Yeah. So uh, let's move. So we're done with Xbox. That's all the Xbox stuff. Yes. Uh, I am dis. I am disappointed with a regular Game Pass. Game Pass Ultimate, though. Yeah. I don't know. We're seeing the value a little more. <laughs> um. Let's. I guess we should just go right to PlayStation. Yes. Now, PlayStation Plus, uh, for all intents and purposes, same thing as Xbox Live Gold. It served a purpose years ago, back on the PS3. It even had a bigger purpose, because PS3 was free multiplayer. So PS Plus originally wasn't for multiplayer. It was for like other things, like exclusive content and discounts and you know the free games and whatnot. And then they added multiplayer with the PS4. Uh, and now uh, PS Plus is good for online multiplayer, the free games, discounts and whatnot, but also cloud storage. People forget this. On the Xbox, it's free. You can just upload your game saves to the cloud and that's fine. On PlayStation, you need to be a PS Plus subscriber and you get 100 gigs of cloud storage uh, for your save game data. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That you don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that um, you that they all, pay for, well, that, 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 that they gatekeep a, the, the cloud storage. Exactly. It's a good thing that they offer cloud storage. It's a bad thing that they're gatekeeping it. So that's another thing that uh, Microsoft provides uh, that uh, is is like behind a paywall on other platforms. I think Nintendo Switch Online is the same way. Well, 
to be fair to Sony, uh, yes, Nintendo also keeps uh, cloud saving behind a paywall, but that on Sony, there are other ways to back up your save data. Like you okay, can all float it onto a thumb drive. You can <laughs> that is true. You, you know, uh, you can move it between consoles easier. Nintendo, it's either the console or the cloud, and you got to pay for the cloud. Uh, so how much storage do you get on Xbox for free? I think it's unlimited. Unlimited free save storage. That doesn't sound right. Somebody, chat, correct me on that. <laughs> um. Also, the PlayStation version of the save file storage is not good. It doesn't do it all of the time. It does like a really bad job at it, especially no, it cross-platform. It's not automatic. I thought I lost my. I thought I lost my save data when I was transferring from your PS4 to my PS4. I thought mm -hmm. I lost it all. It's a big pain in the ass to like try and get it back. Yeah, and uh, especially if you're going to PS5, it doesn't do a good yeah. job. Uh, yeah. um, Xbox, on the other hand, everything's just there. It even still has my save file from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle from the <laughs> Xbox 360 arcade. Yeah. I still have that exact same save file on my Xbox Series X. Yeah. And S. It, it's the same shit. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so here's interesting. On the PlayStation 5, there's actually two more benefits add it to your PlayStation Plus subscription. Mm -hmm. One of them is game help. And that's where like you hit like you go to the the menu button and you can actually get help in the game from other players or from Sony themselves. Wow, what is this friggin' 1-800 Nintendo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hit the PlayStation button and look for game help inside your activity cards to see the tactics you need to get yourself out of a tight spot. How to find that hidden artifact or finally beat that boss that's been holding you up. So that's a fairly interesting feature. Right. Uh, however, of course, if you don't have PlayStation Plus, you can simply just take out your phone and look it up on a strategy guide. Yeah. Uh, having said that, having said that, that does break the immersion when you're playing a game, got to stop, pull out your phone, and then go back to the game. This is all within you know the same system, so you don't take your eyes off the screen. I'm also curious, like how good it works. Like, like, is it gonna yeah. do every game? Is is it gonna be there 24 seven? Like, yeah, I, I don't know, cause I know, I know, I knew this existed, but I never hear anybody talk about it. <laughs> right. It's not like back in the day with Nintendo, you would call up and they would pull out like a Bible for the game and just like yeah. go to that page and help you out. Uh, last Colossi says Xbox Live offers Xbox One unlimited storage space, uh, according to Microsoft website. So yeah. It's for free. For free. Uh, that's crazy. In 2015, yeah. uh, Taking Shapes is a 2015, Major Nelson posted the blog stating that they were upping the limit for Xbox 360 users from 512 <laughs> to 2 gigabytes. So that's crazy that you just yeah. get whatever. And it's the best version of save game files. Again, yes. even my Halo save is on my Xbox Series S, my Xbox Series X, my PC, it's even on cloud storage on my fucking phone. So yeah, it's 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 incredible. Um, PlayStation, it has this. It, you have to pay for it, and it's not. It's still not as good. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing you get on PlayStation Five exclusively is the PlayStation Plus collection. Mm. This is that collection of uh, PS4 games that you automatically get. Right. Yeah, if you're a PlayStation Plus. So and that includes like some top tier games. It's God of War, Uncharted 4, um, The Last of Us Remastered, uh, Mortal Kombat X, Resident Evil 7, Arkham Knight, Call of Duty uh Black Ops 3. Is The Last of Us on there? Uh remastered. Yeah. The so, first one. Yeah. So a, a lot of the best PlayStation 5 games are still PlayStation 4 games. <laughs> yeah. So so I think that that is a lot of the good value there. And PlayStation Plus yeah. still has some decent uh free games when they do the free yeah. games every month. Uh they're they're it has some misses, but I think that they've been a little better than Xbox Live has been. Yes. Uh another thing you get with your PlayStation Plus subscription is uh free shipping 
when you buy directly from the official PlayStation Store. So PlayStationDirect.com, where you can actually buy systems from. If you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you get free shipping. They also have pretty decent discounts when you buy a uh, uh, digital stuff. Like like the yes. like the PlayStation Plus members get a pretty decent discount, a couple yep. bucks off. Uh, uh, Xbox has something I think, but it's not as it's not as good. It's not like that, no. Uh, and the FAQs: Do I need PlayStation Plus to play Fortnite? No, Fortnite and other free to play games such as Apex Legends, World of Tanks, and Spellbreak are free to download and play online. Good to know. Yes. So, uh, in summary, PlayStation Plus has a lot of uh, not as good stuff, but also uh, it gives you some better free games. Yes. But, again, much like Xbox Live Gold, I don't be the benefit of it in 2022 because right. the big selling point of this of playstation plus was you know online multiplayer but i feel like at this point that should not be hidden behind a paywall anymore so so, so, so i i i don't i think it's just as useless as xbox live gold to be completely honest but yeah. i think that um as a service, you get a couple more free games or a couple mm -hmm. some better free games, um, especially with the especially if you have a PlayStation Five. Uh, I, I guess we should look at these services as if you have the newest console. Um, right. And uh, what else was I going to say? That uh, so Xbox Live Gold, I think, is worth less because for free you get the cloud storage. Yes. So, like, there's less of a reason to pay for that service because they're already giving you stuff for free. So, I think that Xbox is doing things better, but I think that if you have a PlayStation, you're more likely to purchase the, the PlayStation Plus service yes. because of the stuff you get with it. So, I think they're both C, but I think PlayStation Plus uh, goes one ahead of Xbox Live. I, I agree with you there. Okay. Now the next is PlayStation Now, which we don't yes. like. <laughs> no. I mean, it sounds good on paper. Right. PlayStation Now, get instant access to a huge library of PS4, PS3, and PS2 games on your PS5, PS4, or Windows PC with new games added every month. You can download or stream them. Stream hundreds of PS4, PS3, or PS2 titles. Uh, play as much as you like, save your progress, and continue playing on on any device. Or pick up over 300 PS4 games to download directly to your console, and they'll be ready to play in 4K if you're playing on the PS5 or PS4 Pro. So, so right it, out, so there's no two different versions of PlayStation Now. They offer you streaming and uh, download uh, direct download of their games with. Uh, for one price problem is uh like ps3 games only streaming mm -hmm. uh so, so we, we got into this argument before how um pl like playstation now has a lot of the same features as xbox uh game pass uh even uh playing it on pc yeah that's pretty that's that's pretty big of of Sony to do that. Uh, I haven't tried it in a really long time, but from my understanding, it's not nearly as good, yeah. <laughs> like the, of the of an experience. And if the cloud storage situation has told me anything, this is not going to be nearly as seamless as just downloading the app and lo and 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 going straight into the game, like what yeah. I did with Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. Um, but the, but if you if you're looking at like cross platform games, uh. PlayStation now has a lot of uh, AAA stuff, has a lot of good yeah. AAA stuff. So, so the library isn't anything to snuff at. Also, it's yeah. sixty dollars for twelve a year. months. Yeah, yes. So that's pretty. Yeah, you can buy it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, you can buy the whole year for just sixty dollars. Uh, you know, having said that, there's no bundle with PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus like Game Pass Ultimate is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think. 
the thing with PlayStation now really wants to be like for PlayStation systems, whereas Game Pass Ultimate has like bigger picture ideas. It doesn't just want to be on Xbox consoles. It wants to be on PC and mobile and like built into televisions and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, so Game Pass wants to be everywhere and and PlayStation now is is really just to to, to just for PlayStation users and 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 fans of PlayStation. Um Yeah. So, I mean, I guess looking at it, it's like a pretty decent value and it's cheaper than Game Pass. Uh it's yes. just not going to be as seamless or or as good of a user experience. Um Yeah. So, I don't know. I guess it would be right under Game Pass, right? I mean, I mean, but the the thing is though that like Game Pass alone isn't that great of a value. Game Pass Ultimate is a great not a I don't want to say it's a great value, but it's definitely the one you should look at more than just Game Pass on its own because Game Pass on its own, you don't get the cloud streaming, you have to choose between PC or console. So that kind yeah. of that's making me think that PlayStation Now might be over Game Pass because you get it on Windows and it's cheaper. And it's got a lot of the same yeah. games. Yes. Uh, I would probably put it in B tier right. ahead of Game Pass, but still not as good as Game Pass Ultimate. Also, I we agree. should mention that apparently Sony is planning a dedicated Game Pass killer. Yes. There was that Project Spartacus from a few months back that's supposed to be a whole new version of PlayStation Now. Is that it not... Might... I, I said on the podcast that that was uh, definitely a, a nod at them going after Xbox, calling it Project Spartacus. Everyone's yeah, like, why? And I'm like, because it's like Spartan. It's like a Halo thing. And they're like, that has nothing no. to do with Spartacus. I was like, oh, come on, it's the same. The word's very similar. It's very obviously like them targeting Xbox. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why they called it Project Spartacus. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, we don't know what that service is going to be like. Uh, if it's yeah. cheaper than Game Pass, that's going to be pretty crazy. But I can't imagine them killing Game Pass. I think Game Pass no. is, is, is no, no, no. here to stay. Especially with with Microsoft buying up all these studios. That's another thing we yeah. forgot to mention. Xbox freaking buying up all these studios. So all these studios are going to be freaking rolled into uh, Ultimate. Well, yeah. That when I said, you know, when Xbox Game Studios day and date, I said that's why they're buying Activision right. and whatnot. You know. So, all right. I think we're in a good spot so far. Yeah. Uh, let's take a second here to thank our boys. Okay. Uh like blazing with the prime subscription thank you scott the sloth with 200 bits briar briar rye, rye thanks for gifting two subs intensive fire thanks for the subscription j buggy thanks for the 51 months of support will congrats on thank the new you. baby haven't been on live in a while so sorry it's late thank you thank you he is currently screaming his head off right now my poor wife has to deal with him all by yourself. That's uh, that's the wolf way. Yeah, it's a good thing. Good thing the the older one is in bed right now. Otherwise, I'm sure she would just leave. <laughs> Intensive fire. Thanks for gifting a sub. I appreciate yeah. all you people. Uh, just so you know, just a little heads up. If you want to support the podcast, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch account and support us for free. It doesn't cost you any money because like you already have I Amazon Prime. Just did. Oh my god, thank you for the subscription, Will Wolf. Damn it, I think. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, and if you're a podcast listener, you can still do that. You can do it whenever you want. You don't have to do it when we're live. Um, all right, let's keep going. We got to do Nintendo yes. now. Uh, regular old Nintendo Switch Online subscription is a garbage value. <laughs> yes. Well, well okay, so it, it's no. cheap. I don't think Nintendo Switch Online on its own is a garbage value. I think Nintendo Switch Online on its own is a good value for a service that needs significant improvement. I agree. I, I think that's a very good way to put it. Yeah. So, so the biggest value you get is for people, old people like us who actually want to play original Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. And a good yes. library with some of the best stuff. 
Yes. And they recently added Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings, so... Yeah, so there's a lot of, like, awesome stuff there. The The yeah. problem is that Nintendo historically always let you play games online with your friends, albeit very poorly. <laughs> they let you play it online with, with your friends for free. Now, all of a sudden... Yes. Like, a, what was it, a year into the Switch life cycle? They decided... A little over a year. They decided, paywall... You've already been yeah. playing Mario Kart with your friends, but now, boom, you got to pay for it. So that pissed a lot of people off. Uh, uh, and also, they didn't upgrade that. the service any. They didn't upgrade the online any more and make it any better. They just yeah. started charging people for it. So that yeah. put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Uh, not only that, like we mentioned, uh, cloud data storage is behind a paywall, um, and it's and, and there's it's no other trash. way to your saves. It's, it's, it's not a, great. It's not good, and it doesn't work with all games. It doesn't work with any Pokemon game because they yeah. think that you can, like, manipulate your save files if that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, also, there's no uniform system voice chat. They, you have to use a stupid cell phone app. In yes. Or it's like, you know, chat with people or set up matches or whatnot for some games. So, it so, is so, ridiculous ridiculous that they don't allow that to happen on the system itself so that's a weird thing for me because i feel like, like it's horrible it's a horrible situation but that is more of like like it's it's in the nintendo switch online app which is what makes it tied to this but really that's mm -hmm. a flaw in uh nintendo's uh uh software design in general because it shouldn't and their, be their overall philosophy yeah it shouldn't be part of nintendo switch online it should be just in the system it should be a system yeah. thing yes. it, it like just a just a few updates ago like a year ago they finally implemented like a party system <laughs> like on the on the switch like they have a lot of things that they need to fix with their online infrastructure that doesn't even include nintendo switch online or shouldn't even be a part of nintendo switch online it should be part of the system itself yeah. um but you can't talk about nintendo switch online without talking about their terrible voice communication system yes um so uh the fact that it's 20 dollars a year is crazy the fact that it's 40 dollars for eight people if you want to have eight That's, people on it yeah is also oh no it's 35 is also crazy. That's a huge value. And and again, I think the biggest plus is these NES and Super Nintendo games. Even though they've been slowing down on the releases of stuff like that, there's still yeah. some of the best games on the Nintendo Switch are in this collection. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I only pay for this service for this. I, I mean, I use the cloud storage, but it's it just doesn't fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and playing online with friends um yeah so and they are they so i said that they haven't fixed the online with friends like playing the, like their online infrastructure uh they only very recently kind of started to change it with monster hunter rise and whatever else recently came out i forgot there's but a, that's there, still on a game by game basis and that's right for newer games like smash right. brothers didn't get this update Mario right. Kart didn't get this update. Uh, Splatoon didn't get this update. Right. Splatoon is another one of the games that doesn't support cloud storage, which is yeah. so fucking stupid. That, and, and the excuse is stupid. Like, I understand, like, I kind of understand Splatoon because it came out before the cloud storage was a thing. And I'm sure it was in development for a long time and they didn't foresee cloud storage being a thing and, and, and they developed it in a weird way where patching in cloud storage would, would be weird. Um, yeah. There's no excuse for Pokemon games. Like people yeah. think, people say that there's ways to manipulate the save file and whatever. So what? No other platform has this issue. Yeah. Fig like figure it out. Make it so that you can't manipulate the save file. Yeah. Like, I, I honestly don't know how you would be able to do that. Most yeah, it, people who play Pokemon or any of these games don't know how to do that. It, it's it's a weird thing with, like, a, like for example, with old Pokemon games. 
you can take the save file, put it into a computer, and just get whatever Pokemon you want. Just make what it, just, just with a program, you could just say, I want a level 99 Mew in my party, and you could just do it. You just inject yeah. it in there. But the amount um, of work to do that and like right. research to know how to do that, like most people are not going to do that. And the people who are going to do that are already doing that. The cloud yeah. storage thing isn't really, it's really more so like, um, there's there's ways to spoof it like uh like you play the same spot over and over again uh yeah. and just reload the same save file i guess uh but again there's ways like what i always said about returnal like there should be a way where uh you start the save file and it deletes the old save file you know what i yeah. mean like like in a game like returnal you don't want to save file because you want the game to be hard but why not just let you pick up where the game left off and then the save file like it self destructs? There's games right. that do that already. It's 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 an artificial way to make the game. It's it's not making the game harder. It's just making your life more miserable playing that game because yeah. people just leave their PlayStation fives on for a week and then they get an update and it deletes their save file anyway. Uh, Board Adina says. Pokemon Arceus doesn't even have online battles, so there's no reason to be worried about people hacking. That's another thing. Yeah. Um, if the game doesn't have an online feature, wh why not support cloud saves at all? Let us manipulate our save file. If if there's no if there's no uh, competitive mode, who gives a shit? Like Splatoon, I understand it's it's a competitive shooter, but for friggin' Pokemon, who cares if somebody wants to get like a million of the same shiny? Like if they could do that, let them do it. Who cares? Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's the rant on uh, on on cloud saves. So yeah, we're here trying to put Nintendo Switch online somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a pretty bad service in general, except for the NES and SNES games. I think those are fucking awesome. Even though they've yeah. slowed down on releasing them, we still have some of the best. They've already peaked. We have the best games that the platform has to, that, that that those platforms have to offer anyway. And the fact that it's only $20. Yeah. I I think it's even though this even though a lot of the features that these other platforms have are worse on Nintendo Switch Online, I think the other stuff that it brings makes it pretty high up there. Yeah, I can see this as like the bottom of the B tier. Yeah, I I, I, I see that. I was gonna put top yeah, of C, I, but I think bottom of B. I'm I'm for it. Yeah, again, this could all change, but you know, if any other services get added to B tier, Switch will always be at the end because <laughs> it's it's not it's not expensive. The NES and SNES games are good are great value. Honestly, it's a shame they're not adding to it. I mean. You got to pay for multiplayer, which, you know, it is it is what it is. You got to pay for multiplayer on all the systems. Um, also, too, we forgot to mention that they do offer unique games exclusive to uh, Switch Online, like Tetris 99, Pac-Man 99. True. Uh, Mario 35. And those games are good. Yeah. So, so, so I guess similar to Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus, you get some free games, but the Nintendo ones are unrivaled. You get some, yeah, some crazy good stuff there, and a lot of. I mean, it's all retro stuff, but you're watching the Wolf. Then that's the <laughs> shit we care about. That yeah, that's the bread and butter. God of War? Are you crazy? Horizon? Nah, what you call it? Get out of here! Now we got to talk about. The expansion pass, which might not be D. that good of a deal. <laughs> D. <laughs> so, all right, I have to right. I have to defend the expansion pass a little bit. So, the biggest draw okay. is, of course, the N64 games. I'll, the N64 games have some bad emulation, but I'm going to defend yes. them and say that N64, it's hard to emulate those games. It's hard so, to emulate, and they are getting better. They are getting they better. Are, they've they are getting better. They've slowly fixed some stuff, yes. and it's got some great N64 games. And the stuff that's wrong with them really isn't that bad. Honestly, yeah. I've played a bunch of it, and it's great. Playing freaking Mario 64 on Nintendo Switch Online is a great experience. Some people uh, say there's input lag. I feel none of that. I was speedrunning that game. It feels great. Uh, should also mention, you also get Sega Genesis games in oh, this yes. collection. 
Now, uh, most of these games you could already get through a separate purchase of the Sega Genesis Classics Collection, but this also has other games on it like uh, Strider, which is not available on the Switch anywhere else, and that's a really good game. Also, Switch Online gives you access to all those, all the other features that the NES and SNES collections have, like uh, Rewind. Like if you're into rewinding your games. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. It and also online gives... multiplayer, I should I should say. That's another thing we forget. When they add these games to Switch Online collections, there's online multiplayer. Oh, for, for the retro games. Yes, for NES and yeah. SNES games and N64 and, and Genesis, you can play these games online with other people who have the same yeah. service. So that's pretty awesome for a retro game. Um, it also gives you the privilege of buying a controller for that size. Yes. I've actually never opened this. I've never checked out the Genesis controller. Uh, and I don't uh, think I will. Did you see My Life in Gaming did like a two-hour video where they, they bought all those controllers, the NES, the SNES, the N64, and the Genesis, and they played them on like, 100, uh, like 120 games on the Switch? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's nuts. I wish I had that time. Uh, uh, they said basically, aside from the Super Nintendo controller, every other controller is going to be rough. <laughs> what do you mean? Because the Super mean, Nintendo controller has like the right amount of buttons aside from the analog sticks. Oh, so they're playing other types of games with it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The N64 controller is incredibly disappointing. Really? Yeah, the the way that the buttons are mapped is is you know what it is? It's not the N sixty four controller's fault. It's Nintendo Switch Online's uh N sixty four uh games app that is the problem because there's no button remapping. Yes. Uh, you can remap on the on the on the system level, but you can't remap the right stick. So it kinda like it sucks. It, it they really yeah. fucked that up. Um and that's a weird thing to fuck up. Uh yeah. So N64 games, you can play them, but uh, you need a, you need a, I mean, certain games are, I'll, I'll say most games are going to be just fine playing them on there. Uh, some games you might be a little frustrated playing them with, with yeah. a normal controller that isn't an N64 controller. Uh, since making videos on this N64 online service, uh, I've learned that um, the, the Hyperkin Admiral controller, um, has a firmware update where you could uh it'll play just fine on there uh i also yeah. heard that the newest retro fighters controller can do it but mine couldn't for some reason um what else did i want to say uh also uh, another thing that is great about the expansion pass that we didn't really know when it released a lot of uh they said that we knew that we were going to get uh, Nintendo first party DLC sometimes as part of the expansion pass. Like we got Animal Crossing right when it launched. We got Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise. Right. Um, and that's all they said. It was assumed that, well, everybody speculated if we're getting that, chances are we could be getting future Nintendo DLC added to expansion pass. Right. And they've confirmed that the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass will be added to the expansion pack. I, that's I a think 20, that's a $25 value included in your uh, subscription. All right. Well, when you put it that way, it doesn't sound like that big of a deal because because the expansion <laughs> pass is already, what, $40 a month? Well, yeah, it's, it's no, it's not, not a month, $40 it's, a year, it's, a year, it's $50 a year, $50 a year. Well, $50 a year gets you. $25 worth of DLC from Mario Kart. Whatever the hell uh, Animal Crossing Happy Home does Paradise costs on its own. And, you know, N64 and Genesis games. So, so, to be clear, I still don't think this is a good value. <laughs> it is still cheaper than, uh, even yes. though it's more expensive than Nintendo Switch Online, still cheaper than PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. I... What I will say is if they continue this trend of adding DLC to yes. the expansion pack, pack, like if they go back and add the Breath of the Wild DLC to it, or you know they start making more DLC for all their other games and put it on this, then I can see the value start to increase. As of now, though, I don't see the value 
in the expansion pack for anyone but the hardest of hardcore Nintendo fans or for people who make Nintendo content on YouTube. <laughs> so I, I'm i a little concerned that they might put a lot of the DLC on the expansion pass and, and, and then that will build a great library of, of DLC content as the expansion pass yeah. and then it'll probably be a good value. I'm concerned they might take stuff away eventually. Like in two years, mm. maybe there'll be a lot of DLC on there but then they'll take Happy Home Paradise away. And then that right. would be upsetting because people didn't buy it you know they they were just they just had it as part of their expansion pass right um anyway i do think that the n64 games is worth a lot i I think that th- those games on your switch is fucking awesome and i think that that's worth the expansion pass on its own even though people gave it a lot of shit the emulation isn't that great um having those games on the switch is awesome um so i give it a lot of credit for that um otherwise no like the genesis games it's great to have those they're already on the switch and you just have to pay for it once and they're and they're and they're right there uh um so i and the dlc like it's good but we need more we need a lot more dlc for it for it to be worth it but again we're comparing it against xbox live and xbox and, and and playstation plus and it's still cheaper than both of those well the base model Nintendo Switch Online membership is with you know you had the expansion pack and it's significantly more now. I thought, oh no, no, no Nintendo Switch mind. Online I'm... plus expansion pass is forty dollars a year. Yeah, I screwed up. I thought it was an additional forty dollars a year. It's an additional thirty dollars a year, which is more than the base cost of Switch Online. Wait, wait, wait. That's so it's fifty. Switch a year. Online. I'm lying. Switch... I'm, I'm messing up. Switch Online is $20 a year on its own. Switch Online plus Expansion Pack is $50 a year, which means it's a $30 upcharge for the Expansion Pack. Yeah, so you can't get the Expansion Pack on its own. So we have to, we, right. in, in the rating, we have to include Nintendo Switch Online, which means it has to go bottom of B tier or top of C tier. Top of C tier. Fine. Actually, I do th- you know bottom bottom of C tier. No, it's better I than. I really don't. I really don't think the value is there. It is there because it includes the year of regular Nintendo Switch online, so it has to be better than PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. But you're paying an ex- You're paying more than double the cost of Switch Online for broken emulation of N64 games. For Genesis games you could have already bought and for the promise of future DLC. So let's I don't assume think that's I don't think that's worth the extra thirty bucks. Let's assume that the base Nintendo Switch Online didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Where would this go? Because then it probably, only saves you ten dollars. Yeah, probably top of D tier then. Really? Because if if the N sixty four emulation isn't great if you know i can get the genesis games literally anywhere else and you know if you only get two expansion packs i don't i don't see how uh 30 is worth it i really don't think uh the nintendo 64 emulation is bad i i think that it's got some weird shit but uh, after playing Nintendo 64 emulators on all different types of devices, on playing on PC and all this shit, it does a pretty decent job. It's there's right. nothing game breaking about it. The so the fog isn't there in one level of freaking Zelda. The only thing that's like egregious is the input lag in in, in right. Zelda. But the input lag isn't there on any of the games that I want to fucking play on, <laughs> on Nintendo Switch Online. So I think that the think- emulation is a little bro- blown out of proportion. Also, too, like how many games are there on the N64 collection? There's not a lot. There's like 11 now, I think. Yeah, if they need to add a lot more. And I know they said they were going to, but they've been rolling that out pretty slowly. All right, I'll put out bottom of C. I can live with that. I'm not happy about it. Uh, because, because the games that you get with it, including the 12 months of original regular vanilla Nintendo Switch Online is still better than the games that you get with Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus. Right. 
All right, well, anyway, now we're on to the dumb shit. We got... <laughs> yeah. Stadia, what, D? You want to just throw that in D? Yeah, mostly because... Well, like, we talked about this last week. It, it looks like it's on its way out. It's on its way out. It's pro I just canceled my subscription. I didn't know. I've been paying for it this whole time since the launch. Really? I've been paying for it, yeah. Um, I have to say, it's got a lot of good games. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of good games. And for all intents and purposes, it worked. But... You know, it had confusing messaging. It they didn't keep advertising it. They didn't, you know, add what they wanted to add to it. There were no ex good exclusives. They shut down all of their first party studios, and and you still have to immediately. And I'm looking at it now. These ones that say pro, you need the subscription, and then you buy the game. So yeah, like like if I if like if like okay, uh, I don't let let's assume I don't have a console at all. I'm new to video games. And I want to play Dynasty Warriors really bad. I pay 60 bucks and I play Dynasty Warriors and that's it. I think that's a good deal. If it wasn't fucking Dynasty Warriors. If it was yeah. like <laughs> Far Cry. If it was Far Cry. Take my $60. I want to try Far Cry. You know? But instead you have to buy the pro subscription. And then you have to buy the game. It gives you a discount on the game. But I still don't think that's enough. Yeah, I, I think that that this weird structure they have could have been decent but the fact that you some need a pro and some don't and that that and also almost all of these games are available on other platforms including yeah uh game pass so what are we doing here we're putting that in d tier fuck that fuck stadia yeah. big uh, disappointment well, Not let's... surprising, but big disappointment. Luna. I don't know much about Amazon Luna. So Amazon Luna is technically still in early access. Okay. But, I mean, it's up. It's available. People play it. It has its own controller. Um, It's got a big library of games. It has exclusives. Like, it had... What the fuck's that, ge that one game that's on there that, like, people, like, actually like? Uh, the, the, you're talking about the MMO? Yes. Not Lost Ark. The one before that, that everybody was playing. Yeah. Shit, what was it called? That Now that one had some chat. great marketing because, because they freaking, yeah. uh, New World, New World, the chat says. Yes. Um, yeah. That had some great marketing because they just paid a bunch of streamers to spend a day playing that game and then they all got hooked yeah. on it. Yeah. So Luna is $6 a month. It's right now uh has a big library of games including control grid and metro exodus uh 1080p 60 for streaming which honestly that's fine you don't the really fact need... that they said that is good because honestly yeah. they could probably do 4k 60 but no one's gonna support that so just yeah. saying 1080p 60 is the, the much better move than what stadia yeah. did Saying that they can do 4K60 and then just not doing it. Yeah, they also offer a family a family only uh, channel for two for three dollars extra a month. That's a big library of E and E10 rated games. Three dollars extra? That, no, no, no. It's three dollars. Oh, for it's just on, that. Oh, it's on its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was gonna say you're fine. losing, you're losing games. Why would <laughs> why would that cost more money? So um, mind. <laughs> I think this is this sounds pretty decent. Um, especially like it sounds decent for New World. Assuming that New World is like is like wow, and you would pay a subscription yeah. service anyway. Like, can you play New World without a subscription to Luna? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. How do I play this game? Buy now. Uh, Deluxe what Standard is Edition. Amazon Luna? Luna is a cloud gaming service that lets you play games on supported Fire TV, Fire tablets, Windows PCs, Chromebooks, and Mac devices, and web apps on iPhone, iPads, and Android phones. So this is, a again, a cross-platform streaming service, similar to probably closer to what Game Pass is doing than what Stadia was doing. Because Stadia, if you remember... They kept saying there were going to be a cross-platform streaming service, but you can only access it in Chrome browsers <laughs> and a, a very specific kind of Chromecast. Yes. 
Uh, people in the chat are saying you can't play New World on Luna. And that, and I just saw that New World is available on Steam. Oh. So well, that changes things then. So what the fuck? <laughs> so why do I why do I want this again? Yeah. Luna is included with Prime question mark? What? No, it is not. That would be no. wild. That would justify the price increase to Prime that they're doing this year. Oh, what is that about? You didn't hear that? There No. I think it's like an extra twenty dollars a year. Oh my god. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> Everything's terrible. So I got another question. Why is Ubisoft Plus on this page? Uh, because I think you can add Ubisoft Plus to Luna for an extra eighteen dollars. That's so much. Yeah. Well. N well, no. It. It's an extra twelve dollars. Oh no, you're right. No, yeah, wait, no, that's yeah. a separate. So why is it even oh, here? Oh, here you go. <laughs> what is the Ubisoft Plus channel? Ubisoft Plus channel on Luna includes a growing library of new and favorite games from Ubisoft available to play from the cloud. Select titles are select titles are premium editions and include additional content. Ubisoft now offers a monthly rewards, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So there's Luna. All right. Luna is the name of the overall service. Luna Plus is the $6 a month uh, service where you get Control, Metro Exodus, and Grid, and it's 60, uh, 60 frames per second, 1080p. Luna Plus is its own channel. Then there's Ubisoft Plus, which is its own channel. And then you got the Family Channel, which is its own channel. So think of this like TV, where Luna is like, I don't know, fucking... Luna, Luna Plus is like uh, Comedy Central. Family Channel is the Family Channel. And Ubisoft Plus is like HBO. Just to you make follow? this more confusing, Ubisoft Plus is also a separate thing you could, you could buy outside of Luna completely. Yes. And it yes. is cheaper. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's $15 a month. Oh, God. Well, it's starting oh, I at $15. Now, hold on. It's right. $18 a month if you want to include cloud gaming with Luna. Okay, so that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. So so, so so you so Ubisoft Plus is on this page because Ubisoft is using Luna as the cloud version of Ubisoft Plus. Uh who just said it? I was a bullfrog said so similar to Prime Video having the ability to add Paramount Plus to it. Yes, that is it. So I don't know if you noticed but like on Amazon Prime Video, you can add subscriptions to other services. Okay. Like you can add an HBO Max subscription on top of your Prime subscription. You can add a Paramount Plus subscription on top of your Prime subscription. So that's kind of like what they're doing with Luna, Luna Plus, Ubisoft Plus, and the Family Channel. Okay. Does that make sense? I I get it, but it's stupid. I hate it. The, the sound, Luna is the is the um, Luna is the console. Luna Plus is a game. Ubisoft Plus is a game, and the Family Channel is a game. There, I did it. <laughs> no, I like the TV analogy better. Okay. Um. But I see no benefit to to Luna at all. When you when you I bring think... into all these other when you bring all these other streaming services in, into play, the only value I see is that you can get it for just six dollars. Yeah, and there's Twitch integration. Wow! Because cool. of course, I love that so much. Th this sounded like a good idea. Then the more we read into it, the worse it got. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's better than Stadia because it's just yes. a subscription service, and you get all of these good games. Like these are some great games. Yes. Um, a lot of Ubisoft stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, because Ubisoft Plus. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, what, top of D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do top of D. And then while we're at it, let's do UPlay Plus. 
I think that's bottom of D. I mean, so like Oh, absolutely. So like the the 18 dollars a month is so much. Yeah. Now that you think about it. And that's just what we were talking about with the channel on Luna. That's what that is. It's a channel on Luna. Yeah. So does that mean hold on. Now let me hmm. Does that mean you have to pay six dollars a month for Luna and then eighteen for for Ubisoft or no? Can you just play, pay no. the eighteen? Okay. You can just pay the eighteen. Okay. So if you just want to play Ubisoft games on PC, it's fifteen dollars a month. That is a bad deal. <laughs> That is, yeah, that's that's worse than Stadia, I'm going to say. Yeah. Because a lot of those games are on Stadia. Yes. So, I mean. Uh, okay, EA Play. Now, you get that in Game Pass. Yes. In Game Pass Ultimate. You do. Yes. And in Game Pass and, for PC. Yes. And th they have their own separate thing. I think there's also, because there's also EA Origin, which is their store. And I think Origin Access is a different version of it, but for all intents and purposes, it's all like you can play EA games, so we'll just count it as one thing. So how much is this? Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, what the f Okay. $5 a month for regular old EA play, uh, which is pretty okay. good. Uh, play select new yeah. released games up to 10 hours. What? <laughs> up to 10 hours a day before they launch. Be up to 10 hours launch okay hold on play select new release games for up to 10 hours two days oh up well i'm having a stroke you can play new release games before they launch for <laughs> up to 10 hours you can play the games early you can play yeah. new release but, games early that but the but hold on, does, does that mean you could play them for only 10 hours, or does that mean you could play them from yes. 10 hours before two days before launch? Is that a, because there's a dash. Does that mean that there's a time stretch, it, it, or does that mean th that should be a comma? It means, uh, I can, okay, if the game launches Friday, and they give you early access on Monday, you can play the game a for total a total combined, of 10 hours. Yeah. A total of 10 hours between Friday and Thursday. Does that? Okay. Yes. Follow that is yes. stupid, but okay. Uh, so I, I At hate least they give you early access. That, I that's hate something. No, I fucking hate early access because like, like, like around like the, the late Xbox 360, early Xbox one era companies were, uh, releasing games early access if you had a pre-order on the game and yes. that's not early access that's just r delaying the release of the game <laughs> that's punishing people who want to wait for reviews and see if the game is good or not i'm gonna exit and come back in. yeah the game is out already you're just putting uh you're just gatekeeping it further like the game's out you already did the work it's out the work is done. So that's stupid. Um, next one, unlock member only challenges and in-game rewards. Okay. Uh, next one, get unlimited access to a collection of our best loved games. Okay, that makes sense. $5 a month, not bad. But then the pro, only on Origin and EA Desktop. Play premium editions of select new release games before uh, days before they launch. Get unlimited access to a library of premium edition electronic arts games and fan favorite series. Unlock member-only challenges and in-game rewards. Okay, so really, you're just fucking playing games. Um, I'm not going to say that playing games early is... Uh, I'm not going to... I refuse to say that that's a feature. I think that that's, uh, that's removing a feature from everybody else. <laughs> you're, 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 you're hurting people. Did Will Freezer, is he fucking... Will? We lost Will. He's blinking. Blink so, once if you're okay. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, there you are. Um, All right. Yeah, Sorry. I refuse. To, I refuse to say that. Um, I refuse to say that. Uh, that's a feature. I think that they're removing a feature from everybody else by letting games, letting you play games early. Do you agree? Are you there? I don't. Uh, I'm having a. I'm having a uh, rough time with you. Can you hear me? He can't hear me. 
I'll leave. How about that? This sounds like a you problem. Yeah, it's a you problem. Yeah, my voice is going through Discord. Hello? Hello. Hi. Am I still here? You are still here. Okay. Everything is just slowing down. Everything is dying. I Help. I can't help you. You're on your own. Okay. Anyway. Fantastic. Um. Yeah, I, I. I mean, I don't want to play any of these EA games. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Yeah, I don't think this is a good deal just because I don't want to play any of these fucking games. <laughs> and again, well, again, well, this feel... is part of Game Pass. So yeah. So why I would I pay like, for just well, EA Play? I feel like of all these like specific kinds of services. EA, EA Play is one of the better ones because, first of all, you get all the Star Wars games right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, too, this is mostly for, like, sports fans. So people who play oh, Madden right. and FIFA, you know. Okay. And if Battlefield is ever good again, this would be the home for it. I see the benefit I, for sports fans because uh, you're going to buy that game every year anyway. Yeah. So why not just pay for the subscription? Yeah, so this is, you know, th- this is a. I think this is a good platform for a very specific audience. It's just that we are not that audience. I struggle to put it. It's going in D tier. I struggle to put it too high because uh, it's already fucking in Game Pass. <laughs> True. <laughs> and you, I would never suggest anybody buy EA Play. Unless they only buy sports games on PC, I would never suggest uh, EA Play on its own. I would only suggest buying Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Right. So the fact that we're even rec- the fact that I would recommend EA Play to anybody ever, I think puts it behind Luna, <laughs> <laughs> like like in front of. I would never suggest you play to anybody. Right. Stadia. Yeah. Uh, there's zero people I would I would suggest Stadia to. Um. And there's people I want to suggest Stadia to, but I I can't because, uh, the 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 way it's structured is stupid. Right. But also Luna. I mean, should it go above Luna? I think so. Okay. I think. I think it's just because I again I do think there's it's a good value, but for a very specific audience. Otaku oh, Sam that... s- says, "What about the Sims? If this has the Sims and all of the DLC, it, then that's pretty. I think it does have big. I think it does have the Sims. That is, that is, uh, like a huge yeah. deal. I don't see the Sims on here at all." Maybe that's just not its selling point. But, you know, they're like, you know, people used to go into GameStop and just exclusively to buy uh, The yeah. Sims and the, the DLC for The Sims. So I think I think if it if it had that stuff, then it would probably be a pretty decent value. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, last thing is humble choice. I know nothing about this. Uh, f- yeah, this was this might be the dark horse. <laughs> Uh, Humble choice. Get a monthly mix of PC games, yours to own forever. Whoa! Uh, play your play our humble games collection as a member bonus and enjoy incredible savings and discounts. And this month's humble choice is Borderlands Three. Oh yeah, we we love that. My favorite game <laughs> series. Uh, twelve dollars a month. Yes. Uh, it, it just says twelve dollars. It doesn't say how when you pay that. <laughs> so according to uh, Tech Radar, it's it's a, oh it's expensive. It is a hundred and eighty dollars for the year. Okay, uh, but the money goes to charity, and the games are DRM free, and uh, they have sales every day. 
if you're a member. Okay. Uh, ex exclusive access to Humble Games collection. Uh, discover your next indie obsession in a growing library of Humble Games. Okay. Can I see them? Uh, Forager. Uh, Void Bastards. And Unsighted. With new games added every month. Okay, so there is a collection. <laughs> yes. How come I can't find that collection? So if Scroll I get down, this, is the Humble Games collection part of it? Yeah. So right there, the Humble exclusive access to the Humble Games collection. This is a this is a bad list. This doesn't do a good job of showing me the games. New releases, all all categories. Uh, Elden Ring. No, Elden Ring's here. As part of the collection? It just says pre-order Elden Ring. Oh, no, because Humble's also like a regular-ass store. Oh, this is fucking so annoying. Can... Where's my... Where's just the list of the games? Do you have... Uh, it says you can download the storefront on your Windows PC. I am currently not running a Windows PC. I am. I just don't want to do it. Uh, just the fact that I can't find the list makes me want to throw this in the bottom of D tier. <laughs> it's expensive, but I'd imagine there's a lot of good stuff, but I can't find the stuff. Yeah. And, and I want to know what the past ones were. This month is Borderlands 3. What did I get last month? Yeah. You know, was it a pile of dog shit or was it like, uh, you know, a good game? This has potential to be pretty decent, but, uh. I'm not seeing. Hey, this is confusing, and I don't like it. Yeah, I th you only I get thought, them for the for the month, be... from what I understand. No, you get it DRM free forever. You get to keep it. Yeah, yeah, it's yours to keep. That's you the know, whole. That's what makes it kind of horse. legit. I thought this was going to be the dark horse, but apparently their website is confusing. It's a confusing layout, and it's just screwing everything up for it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not downloading the app for this. This is stupid. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, this is gonna. Wait, top of D tier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on. I'm trying to see. Here, Reddit. Humble December 2021 humble choice overview. K Jack says, "Epic Games is a better value in a way because the game is free and a similar model. Uh, there are free services." That we're not including, like uh, yeah, like Amazon Prime, uh, or like Prime Gaming gives you free games every once in a while. That we're not really that doesn't really count. Uh, yeah, Epic we're Game Store really giving you free stuff that you're not really paying for that doesn't count as like an online yeah. service to, to us. We're only really concerning like subscription services. Yeah, uh, we encourage I you to get those services was... that give you free stuff. Yeah. Like that's great. I think last month was Man Eater, that shark game. <laughs> Oh, that seems stupid. Found this for older months. Okay. Humble choice. Here you go. Uh, oops, unfortunately, this is now expired. You can't even fucking look at them. Uh, Mafia Definitive Edition, Iron Harvest, and more great games are included with the new monthly bundle. That was for January. Oh, you, can see, you can see the pictures in it. No, you can't. Yeah, Ma Maneater in December. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Amnesia. John Wick Hex in October. Uh, Katana Zero in October. Humble is great for indie stuff. Uh, oh, Super Minimal was there too. Yeah. Uh, Super May Liminal. 2021, get Metro Exodus, Darksiders Genesis, Hellpoint, and more. Uh, March 2021, Control, XCOM. The, 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 so, yeah. prob the, the problem is it's expensive. Uh, but but yeah. the positive I, is that you get to keep everything from when you get the subscription and onward. Mm -hmm. So um, this is kind of what Xbox Live games with gold and PlayStation Plus, those included games. This is what those are, but it's just that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Bottom of C? I'm willing to upgrade it to bottom of C. Yeah, I think bottom of C because I think, I think the idea is there and I think this is... it's. It's heart is in the right place, but I think 
confusing layout and the price is going to turn a lot of people off. Yeah. Um, so I'm always buying this indie shit. And uh, yeah. I feel like if they had all of the newest and greatest indie stuff included, uh, that would really drive it up there. And I'm sure they have a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they have some of it, but uh, but you need to be on top of it and have every single one of them. Um, so I think it's cool, especially if you want to collect all of these games and have them forever. Uh, but uh, it's expensive and, uh, you know, other services have done similar stuff. Yeah. Um, somebody in the chat. Uh, Cthulhu cultist said Maneater is awesome. Balboo. I don't like, like, I see why, like, people, I think I turned down, I did turn down a sponsorship for that game. Oh, yeah. Because really? it doesn't look good. And, and I know everybody, it came out and it got good reviews and people liked it and whatever, but it seemed to me like the big draw to that game was just, uh, like, excessive violence. <laughs> like, it's cool. <laughs> And like I got nothing wrong with excessive violence in video games, but if that's the only thing you got, I it's it's not cool. It's not interesting at all to me. I'm so desensitized I, I, to that. I think um, Man Eater reminds me of games like uh, Goat Simulator, where like yeah, the big appeal to it is like quick moments of like wacky things happening, but like. Outside of that, there's nothing really substantive about the game itself. Yeah, that too. It reminded me of like the humor in like old Grand Theft Auto games. Yeah, like I like like it's just not it's not for me. Uh, I I need some substance behind my uh, uh mindless violence. You know. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Uh. Last thing here, we got uh royalty uh thirteen dropped this in the chat. Uh, humble brings uh bringing incredible indies to xbox game pass on day one this is from last august so yeah. again once again another online service that you could just get in game pass and it's this humble humble that humble collection is the same price as game pass ultimate oh unpacking is in this shit maybe i have to sign up for this wait wait, wait. is unpacking that's the game where like you're unpacking from a move, you but just, it's Game Pass. Moved and, like, so it's yeah. on Game Pass, is what they're saying. It's on Game Pass. Yeah. Do you not have Game Pass? I don't have Game Pass. Wow, cringe. I, I just said like when we we're talking about Game Pass, like I don't have it because I don't. I, I for me personally, there's no value in it. That's so cringe. I'd imagine that uh, game. I'd imagine that uh, uh, unpacking is a mobile game, is it not? I feel like that'd it's be a not. good mobile game. No, it, there are a lot of ripoffs of it on iOS, mm -hmm. but there's no unpacking official on iOS. Can you get it on? Can you get it on, uh, freaking Mac? Oh, it is on Mac. Oh, it is on. Oh, hmm, that could change things. Uh, twenty bucks. I don't know if just like, freaking Game Pass would let you do it on Mac. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that would be sick if Game Pass just let you download games on Mac. Yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, it's on Switch. Never mind. Let's get it on that. <laughs> yeah, it's on Switch. So here's our list. Here it is, the definitive list. Nothing is in S tier. I honestly don't think I want to put anything in S tier. I think no. that uh, the the <laughs> I think that um. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is the closest you're going to get to like the perfect subscription service as of right now. Yeah. But I yes. think that um, none of these are a no-brainer. I think Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is the closest one. But uh, yeah. there's got to be something here that's like just the thing that everybody needs to have. You know? Yeah. And, yeah, and, no, and every Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is close, but... Uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. Yeah. Every single one of these have caveats. Right. Uh, some major, some minor. Game Pass is the only one with the least amount of caveats to it. And the very fact that these services exist is kind of a problem to begin with. <laughs> like, like, most of these shouldn't be a thing. None of these should be a thing anyway. We were playing games online for free forever. And... 
even on PC, I don't got to buy Xbox Live to play games on PC. Yeah. So, like, the very fact that these exist is, is a problem to begin with. That's why I don't think any of them deserve S2. Yeah. Also, too, this is, like, a brand new thing. You know, we're, li- we're living True. in the age of, you know, streaming collections and uh, online game subscription services and whatnot. And, like, that's only a few years old. So and, and it's in the past of couple of years, it's turned into something completely different than it has yes. been previously. So it, it's it, it was in its infancy already, and now it's still it's in its infancy again. It kind of rebooted. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is your definitive list. I don't. I think it's hard to argue any of these. Um, mm-hmm. This seems pretty legit to me. Uh. Should we restate it for audio listeners? Sure. Uh, A tier, yeah. Game Pass Ultimate. B tier, PlayStation Now. Game Pass Regular. And Nintendo Switch Online Vanilla. C tier, PlayStation Plus. Xbox Live Gold. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pass. And then Humble Choice. And then D tier, is all the leftover garbage. EA yeah. Play, Amazon Luna, Google Stadia, U Play Plus. I w- I'm kind of surprised that Stadia is not the very bottom. I think, you know, U Play. I hate U Play from even before it was U Play Plus, back when they make you like sign up for like a U Play account for fucking Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On 360. And like all their other fucking games after that, like you have to sign up for Uplay and you have to go through the Uplay store and do those other random bullshit that like didn't matter in the game itself. It was just extra steps to try to make some form of like exclusivity. Cthulhu Cultus says just burp already. I literally can't. I have the incapability of burping. Okay. I have a disability and you're making fun of it. <laughs> um. All right. We are late in the show. That took... Whenever we do like a tier list, it takes way too long. Yeah. Uh, And we have a lot of news here. We're going to cut some of this out. It's a lot of garbage. First things up... I can tell you, we can cut the cyberpunk news because nobody cares anymore. I I could give two shits about cyberpunk. Uh, Bioshock's getting a Netflix movie. (gasps) Okay. They might actually get made because Netflix actually makes their movies. Um... Uh, Microsoft wants to bring Call of Duty to the Switch. That's actually that, kind of a big deal. But that was just a blurb that they said, uh, yeah. and I think it was pretty obvious. They, they said that they, that they're interested in in it. Phil Spencer said they're interested in putting Call of Duty games on the Switch. That's yeah. all he said. Which I mean, they, that should have been on the Switch a long time ago. Yeah. And if it takes a massive buyout to do it, then I guess it takes a massive buyout. I mean, to do it's it. it's good news because uh, the next call. I don't think the next one's going to be on the Switch, but the next one no. is going to be Modern Warfare Two. And it's uh, it's there's gonna be a War Zone two that launches well, with it. That's this year's Call of Duty. That's this year, yes. Yeah. So next year's Call of Duty will probably be on the Switch. But I think there's capability for them to put War Zone two on the Switch also. It might not at launch, yeah. but you know, eventually. But I don't know about Modern Warfare two. Uh, War Zone n- yes. Modern Warfare two, I don't know. Right, right, right. And I don't really give yeah. a fuck about War Zone two. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't give a fuck about Modern Warfare two. Yeah. Even though that is my favorite Call of Duty game. I just, I just, I am not going to replay that game. Right. Uh, and Capcom has a countdown site to what we don't care. Yeah, we've read that already before. It's really not important. Yeah. Uh, All right, let's do we'll, this. We'll be talking about that next week because next week the thing will have launched. Yes. Um, all right, Nintendo is shutting down the Wii U and 3DS eShops. What? Yes. This breaking news. Yes, this happened literally as the podcast launched. So load the website so i can read so, it. so as of may 23 23rd 2022 it will no longer be so that's this year that's very soon it will no, no next longer year. be oh wait 2022 oh okay. no. I, I skipped ahead right. i skipped ahead all right uh, as of may 23rd 2022 it will no longer be possible to use a credit card to add funds to an account on the nintendo eShop on wii u or 3ds so you as can still buy August- eShop credit yes but you, but you can't Use your credit card on your Wii U or 3DS. Correct. As of August 29th, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use a Nintendo eShop gift card to add funds to an account on the Wii U or 3DS eShop. 
However, it will still be possible to redeem download codes until March 2023. And as of late March 2023, it will no longer be possible to make purchases in the eShop for the Wii U system or the 3DS family of systems. It will also no longer be possible to download free content, including game demos. Uh, so this is unfortunate specifically because the Wii U and 3DS is the last bastion of the virtual console. Yes. <laughs> and it's the last place you can really buy uh, like Pokemon games and stuff. Yeah, a lot of games, actually. So this is kind of bad news, but uh, I mean, it was inevitable. It was going to happen anyway. So yeah, uh, it, it's just it always sucks when they shut down services like this. Because yeah. it means let's, there's a whole section of gaming history that'll just be gone. There will be a lot of games that you'll never be able to play again. And, you know, it, like for people who still play these systems regularly, that's going to that's going to really suck for them. So can you put like, can you put these games on an SD card on this on the on the Wii U? I think you can. I think you can back. I, I know you can put them on an external hard drive. Because that's really scary for me. Is is, yeah. is these services shutting down, and then all of the games that you own that couldn't fit on the console? Yeah, like you got to get them somehow. Uh, users who link their Nintendo Network ID wallet uh, with their Nintendo account wallet uh, can use the shared balance to purchase content on any of these systems until March 2023. After that, the balance can only be used to purchase content for the Switch family of systems. Okay. Good to know. So if you have your Wii, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, if you have your Wii U or 3DS, yeah. get a big ass SD card and put all your shit on it. Uh, yeah. Uh, and use up that, uh, buy all the stuff you want to get now. If you've yeah. ever been thinking about uh, getting anything, make sure you buy it. Even after late March 2023 and for the foreseeable future, it will still be possible to re-download games and DLC receive software updates, and enjoy online play on Wii U and 3DS family of systems. Okay, so you can still download stuff. You can still download stuff you've already purchased. Games can still get updates if the developers are supporting them, and online functionality will work, so you can still play online multiplayer. All right, so you don't have to fill up your SD cards just yet, but I assume that that's the next move, is they're going to get rid yes. of that shit. So, so really, right now, you just got to buy the stuff you've been thinking about buying. Yeah. Uh, when did the Wii U launch? 2013? Uh, that was the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Okay. So twenty. then it was 2012 when it was the Wii U. Uh, correct. November 2012. All right. So this is over 10 years. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, of course it was about time. And also yeah. it was, nobody had one. <laughs> so, so. Right. <laughs> All right, move on. Mario Kart yeah. 8 fans say the DLC is a downgrade. I don't understand this. Does it look worse than than on other I think previous saying, consoles? I think they're saying they, they look worse. All right, this is a tweet from uh, Jolly J who says, I don't know if this is going to bother people, but I feel like it should be pointed out. The tracks they're adding to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe will look completely different from the course in the original game. The art style looks like the Mario Kart Tour app. How do you all feel about this? Um... I think it looks fine. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any... I don't think it looks that much different from what we got in the regular Mario Kart game, the base Mario Kart game. I th Well, I think it... Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a beautiful game. Yes. Um, I think Mario Kart Tour looks pretty good <laughs> also. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're, they're kind of just up in the old maps, you know? Like, like yeah. uh, I think the fact that we're getting any update to Mario Kart is kind of a good thing. We're getting 48 maps over the course of, like, what, two years? Yeah, it's being drip-fed really slowly. Yeah, so, like, I'm sure there's got to be a way for them to, like, you know, facilitate the process a little bit. So if they have to use assets from the mobile game and up them, then that's what they have to do. Uh, this is another tweet from Mercy Knifed, who says, As hyped as I am about the new Mario Kart DLC, I'm really sad the visuals use the art tour art style. Everything looks smooth and rubbery compared to 8's more realistic and fleshed out style. Okay, I can understand. That, that makes more sense to me. Yoshi's Valley yeah. looks fine. That looks fine. Yeah, that, that looks like what Yoshi's Valley should look like. Some of these look fine. Some of these look weird. 
This one looks yeah. weird. Um, there was another Mario Kart news. Oh, the other one was yeah. um, that Good apparently news. you will not. Need, I don't know what the source of this is, but it, oh, here it is. Uh, Nintendo Live yeah, says Nintendo's- you do not need the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass to play the DLC. They're basically saying that if you play online, you could randomly get into games with the DLC. Yes. Uh, If you scroll down, they have a quote from Nintendo's official website. Courses from Wave 1 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass can be played from March 18th locally or online in Friends and Rival Races, even if only one player owns the Booster Course Pass or has access to it as part of Switch Online Expansion Pack membership. From March 22nd, courses from Wave 1 will appear in a random selection when played globally or regionally, uh, regional races with anyone online. So this is good because uh, in the last game, I think on the Wii U, uh, Mm -hmm. you couldn't use the DLC. You couldn't play the DLC online with other people. If you didn't have the DLC, you couldn't play online with other people unless they had the DLC turned off. Yes. And in this case, they're just letting you like sample it. They, they, really, yeah. you're only going to need the DLC if you want to pick the courses yourself or play offline. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's good news for, for Mario that Kart fans. Very good news. Yes. But again, if you have the expansion pass, nothing really to worry about. Yes. Uh, moving on. I fix uh, it. What, is, what are they doing? They tore down the, the Steam Deck. Steam, Valve told them, don't do this. And I fixed it and said, fuck you. We're doing it anyway. Did Valve say everything Valve said not to do? Why would they do that? Yeah. Well, because remember when they showed, when they when Valve did that video of them, te- Valve tearing down the Steam Deck? Right. They said, don't uh, do this. Right, right. So, but I fixed it's like, you don't know who I am. So uh, they tore the whole thing down and it was. Very easy to do. Pretty so much yeah, everything it, Valve said in their video, uh, how to tear it down, that's exactly what they did. Um, and they found out that the thing is very modular and very easy to access the insides and very repairable. So if it's very repairable, why did it only get a 7? So the big problem is the battery is glued in place. Ooh, that's that sucks because that's the, 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 the one thing you're going to want to replace. Yeah. Yeah, that that's the bit that's the big issue and it's not easily removable. So I fix it usually when they have to remove something that's glued into a device like an iPhone or whatnot. They recommend isopropyl alcohol to melt mm. the glue. The problem is the battery of the Steam Deck rests on a plate that has these little vent holes and the vent holes are right underneath the screen. So they were afraid if they did put alcohol in there that it could leak into the screen. Okay, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, it's good that it's modular. And also, I think you need to open it up in order to put the um, the the NVMe drive in there if you want. Yeah, you need to open it up if you want to replace the NVMe drive. Where is the NVMe drive? Like how much uh, of this thing do you got to crack open before you do that? Not much. I think it's like one of the first things you can see. It's covered by a uh, by a shielding so that it doesn't interfere with the Wi-Fi card. I think it's in the bottom left. The fact that the thumbstick is a whole assembly is awesome. You could just pop yeah. that out if anything ever happens. Yeah. Oh, SSD right here. Yeah. Oh, it's tiny. Yeah, it's one of the small NVMe drives. I, I've never seen that before. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, it looks like uh, it looks like you yeah you got to take the whole screen off and stuff. You got to get in there. Yeah. Well, the sc- apparently the screen comes off fairly easily. Okay. They said the big things they liked about it was oh, the opening procedure was simple and straightforward. There's an a, there's above average modularity for most components, and you only need one Phillips head screwdriver for the entire repair. So like on a Mac or like an iPhone, you need like at least three different kinds of screwdrivers. This you only need the one. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, that's great news. Uh, Yes. Also, 
we learned that uh, Valve straight up said that iFixit will be selling uh, uh, certified parts for the Steam Deck. Yeah. So I assume that means if you break your uh, screen, you can just buy a new screen from iFixit, which is fantastic yes. news. Uh, they also said in iFixit's teardown that another uh, disappointment was the USB-C port and the micro SD port. Uh, those were not modular. Those are soldered onto the board. And those are two points that could become, that could wear down and degrade over time mm -hmm. that could, that should be easily fixable, but because they're soldered onto the board, that's not really, uh, you know, that's not really something you can do without a lot of, you know, pre-existing know-how on how to do things like that. So like, didn't the new MacBooks get like a seven? Like, like, like the new MacBooks or the new iPhones or something got like a seven, and they weren't repairable yeah. at all. They, they, I, I don't think, remember. I think it just, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like iFixit's ratings are kind of arbitrary. They kind of like, they, they, they flip flop on what the fucking rating <laughs> even means. Like, this seems like it should be a ten, but I remember they get this something recently got like a really high rating that definitely didn't deserve one. I don't know. Maybe like. One of the recent iPhones got a seven because it's very repairable for an iPhone. Oh, that was okay. So Tech Nanner says you're you're right. Uh, Tech Nanner says yeah. The M1 MacBooks rating from iFixit they said it was a new category of device, and that's probably why it got yeah. a high rating. So that's weird though. Like, <laughs> like does that mean the Nintendo Switch is a different category and deserves a different rating than the Steam Deck? I don't. I think don't so. know. Be I don't know. Dude, like, it, tech doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> Everything uh, is, like, so different now. Or, like, you have a company like Valve that's trying to be modular and repairable, and then you have a company like Apple that's trying to be the exact opposite. Right. Yeah, the Nintendo Switch for a repair has, a, has an 8. It has an 8 out of 10. How the fuck no, can that even, be higher? I don't even know how you can get into that thing. <laughs> Yeah, that this whole this fucking stupid. This is why ratings don't matter. This is why the number rating yeah. doesn't matter. Because because unless unless you know Valve got a seven because they were doing so well, and then the battery, like the one thing you would think would be easy to take out, no, isn't no because replacing a Joy-Con thumbstick is fucking abysmal. Even opening a Joy-Con sucks. Getting the, yeah. getting the switch open at all sucks. Uh, <laughs> taking the battery out of that thing sucks. Wood almost lit his whole damn house on fire trying to take the battery out. It's stupid. Uh, but I do really like uh, their their picture here with the with the uh, Gladys potato. Yes. So I, I guess the category that it's in makes it worse. I don't know. That's just it's stupid. I don't know. It's stupid. Um, Switch is very easy to fix. It can't possibly be easier than the Steam Deck. After all that they just said, it cannot possibly yeah. be easier than the Steam Deck. Um. Anyway, uh, we gotta plow through the rest of this. Knuckles spinoff. Wow, we got a new spinoff. Yeah. Uh. So Paramount was announcing a whole bunch of stuff, uh, and they said not not only is Sonic the Hedgehog three greenlit, but they're gonna do a Knuckles spinoff series on Paramount Plus with Idris Elba reprising the role of Knuckles. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, I have yeah. little faith in us in a TV show. <laughs> a TV uh, show centered around Knuckles specifically. Like I don't know, like what stories you could tell with that guy. That's just him. You're 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 going into the same bad territory as making a spinoff all about Boba Fett. <laughs> Yes. Like like Knuckles is cool because he was the he was the 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 walk in the line mysterious bad guy. Yeah. And he's like cool because he's like barely there. And you see him in chunks. Having a whole show around him, I don't I don't like that. Yeah. Sounds like a sounds like uh, a, it's not gonna be that great. Also also you got a lot of CGI that you gotta do for for a TV show. Yes. And uh this isn't Disney money, this is Paramount money. It's not the same. Right. Um I would also like to add that Knuckles did headline his own game, Knuckles Chaotix on the 32X, and Sega has never ported it. And Sega I've, has ported every Sonic game. I've always wanted to play that. I think I had a 
ROM of it years ago. I don't have it anymore though. Um, it's also you got to emulate it on a 32x emulator. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a, that's as hard as people think it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's it's technically just a Genesis hardware with like a plug-in. Right. Sega Saturn emulation that's sucks. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, also they announced uh Sonic three, a third movie already they do that they they announced they announced the sequel to tom cruise's the mummy before <laughs> that movie came out they announced the whole dark universe before that movie came out and then did they cancel all that oh yeah you see <laughs> tom cruise's the mummy of course they canceled it uh i mean i think we were expecting a third sonic movie i think it just makes yeah. sense um and I'm excited for the movie. I'm excited for the second movie, and I'm excited for the third yeah. movie. I'm excited to see uh, uh, Knuckles get introduced, and then see them, you know, where, where they go after what is presumably Sonic the Sonic Three story. Yeah. Uh, it seems like they're fast tracking uh, uh, one and two. Yeah, which I, you know, I feel like you could start a Sonic the Hedgehog movie series with Sonic Three, right? Like tell that story first. And then just you know expand it from there because honestly this looks like what the movie they should have started with because like we don't need Sonic's origin story really we don't really need Tails' well, well, origin story. When we came out of Sonic, the first movie, we both said that seemed like a great setup for what's next. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So we were more we were we didn't like the movie so much, but we were more excited for what was going to happen next. Yeah. Um. And, and so yeah, yeah, I I think I think that uh I think this next one's gonna be awesome and and uh yeah I'm excited to see where they where they will go from there. I don't know about a show though. I have enough trouble yeah. trying to watch shows. All right, uh, really quick, Resident Evil Four, will uh, is... the Resident Evil Four remake that's been rumored forever uh is apparently not going to be as action focused as the original. It's no longer going to be a strict scene uh scene by scene remake. It's going to have a much more action focus this time around capcom wants to adjust the tones of the remake sorry it's going to have a much more horror focus the game is going to be scarier uh capcom wants to adjust the tones of the remake to make it something spookier taking the direction inspired from the discarded resident evil 4 demos that footage uh which was used in early gamecube preview uh preview reels featured leon wandering a lonely castle blah 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 so basically, Resident Evil 4, famous for taking the series in a more action-oriented direction. The remake that they're planning on doing, which I hope they don't actually do, uh, <laughs> it's going to take a more horror-focused approach, which has been the approach Capcom has been taking with Resident Evil as a whole, based on 7 and the 2 remake and the 3 remake and uh, even Village. Yeah, it sounds like they're, they're leaning towards what they did with uh, uh, 7 and 8. That's what it sounds yeah. like. A more uh, horror focus. Did, did they confirm it was going to be first person? They haven't said. They haven't even announced this game. Oh, okay. It's one of those things where like everybody knows that Capcom's working on it, but Capcom has not said anything about it. Yeah, one of the best things about Resident Evil Four is that it was like an action movie. But the thing people forget about Resident Evil Four is that it was still scary. Yeah, like it was still a very good and effective horror game. Like I shouted. Many a times playing that game because it just it, terrified the crap out of me. It was the general vibe of you being in like a village and everybody's out to get you and stuff. Yeah, uh, it w it was different kinds of horror. It was yeah. like the fear of being overwhelmed, the fear of like you know being lost in a country that's not your own, and even like towards the end of the game with uh, the regenerator Iron Maiden creatures, like those things are legit survival horror terrifying. So, you know, this idea that Resident Evil 4 is an action game is only half true. It's still a really effective horror game. Like, it's still a scary game. Right. These are these are the creatures Will was talking about. I forgot about these guys. Uh, and, and I think one of the things that makes Resident Evil, like, a true horror is that you have to stop to aim. And you get, you get overwhelmed by all of these things. And you have to stop, look at them while they're all coming towards you and and, and deal with it. Right, but by the same token, I think Resident Evil 2 Remake proved that you can do move while aiming and still be scary. But is it, it's, not, it's, is not like, it's not like an action 
shooter though. No. Like 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 you no. can move yeah. while aiming, but you don't get to move that good. Yeah, you move slowly. Yeah. But you can still move out of the way if you need to. It was a more modernized version of the same stuff. Yes. Yes. I feel like if you're going to do anything with Resident Evil 4, the ability to move while aiming and also like make it a more modern control setup, that's it. Otherwise, the game layout like is fine. They should All do what the they did with fine. 2 and 3. But no, not even because they rebuilt 2 and 3 from the ground up. You can just patch the version that's already available but, well, on Switch and Xbox Live and X Xbox One and PS4. Two, two and three, though, they, they they took those games and made them more like four, like a modern version of four. That's right. why I'm saying well, they could just do that, but with four, make it control well, similarly to is, two and three. What I'm saying is with two and three, they completely redid those games. The level design is different. The right. storyline is different. You know, they those are completely different games. Four, aside from, you know, the control layout... And the ability to move doesn't need to be changed. The level design is still up to date. You know, the pacing is still up to date. Nothing about that game, aside from the controls, is out of date. Well, and even the controls, like, if you give it a minute, you can, like, adjust to it. What's happening here is that, Will, you are a Resident Evil 4 purist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to make concessions for the controls, but other than that, like you can't fuck with it. I think there's nothing wrong with with tweaking some things around and putting it in the same engine that they used for Resident Evil 2, the, the remake. Like, I, I don't think there's will, much wrong with that. Like, look, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna play it, but if, you know, <laughs> if they don't if they don't get it right, like you're gonna hear from me. <laughs> right. Do we have to talk about Martha is dead? Who cares? I want to talk about this because I think All this right, is make very it quick. I will make it quick. So, Martha is Dead, not a Batman vs. Superman game, but an upcoming first-person thriller. Uh, so, it's going to, so it's going to be released on PC and Xbox on February 24th, but it's also going to be released on PlayStation systems, and that version is going to be censored. Uh, from the developer, Wired Productions, it is with great regret that we have that we've had to modify the experience on PS5 and PS4 uh, with some elements no longer playable. After four years of passion and hard work, developer LKA now require extra time to make these unplanned changes. Uh, this is resulting in a delay uh, on PS4 and PS5. There is, there is, however, no delay for the physical or digital versions of the game on PC or Xbox Series X. Uh, as for why the game is being censored, Sony uh, has not said anything. Uh, however... Uh, there's been a clip circulating online that is making players uncomfortable and content warning if you're squeamish and you don't like to hear about gory things, turn off now. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to watch it right now. Yeah. The clip involves oh. slicing a dead woman's face off first on the right side and then on the forehead and then on the left side. The clip then shows the player lifting the severed face off the head just before it cuts. In its statement, Wired Production says the developer has communicated that Martha is Dead is intended for adult audiences only and features potentially discomforting scenes and themes that may distress some players, and that the developer offers multiple in-game warnings about the content. The aforementioned clip earns a, certainly earns its discomforting description, though some would argue that it wouldn't be up to it shouldn't be up to the PlayStation set. PlayStation, it shouldn't be up to PlayStation to censor that content for players. The ESRB has rated Martha is Dead an M, citing intense violence, gore, blood, sexual themes, partial nudity, and strong language. It's not like like it's 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 gory, but like it's not like it's it's not it doesn't look good. Like it, it looks like a like it, it the graphics aren't good enough for it to look like real human gore to me it looks like a like a mannequin that is that is has a razor blade on it when they take the face right. off it doesn't look like i've seen worse in a freaking batman comic book you know what i mean I've, yeah i've seen worse in uh the last of us, <laughs> the last of us part two <laughs> that's what's so fascinating to me is that sony who have put out you know say what you will about the last of us and the last of us part two but those are dark hard games to get through because they just they just put you through like the worst that human beings can do to each other and that's okay mm -hmm. but 
that there's something in this game, whether it's taking a face off of a dead body or what, a lot of people thought that it involved sex. Like there was like some a sexual content that Sony's making them take out. Uh, but nobody said that's the case. Whatever it is, like there's something about this game that has spooked Sony and they, they want it. They don't want that on their platform. So when and I hear I about... Sorry. When I he hear about this, I, I feel I, I feel a correlation to like, uh, remember when Cyberpunk came out and it was bad, and then they took it off of platforms for violating like their their like a uh, like not being a good certified game clause. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like it proved to me that th these companies aren't even looking at these games before they release. If if a, if a yeah. publisher is big enough and they have enough money, they're just going to put it on the fucking platform anyway. So I'm at least happy that Sony is at least looking at these games. <laughs> but right. this is this does seem like a pretty stupid reason. Like I just saw that. Clip. Yeah, there really wasn't anything to to write home about. If, if that even is the clip, you know, that people are just assuming that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I that's remember true. there could I be mean, something else. Do you remember? Uh, like like, like what I'm what I'm trying to say is it could mean that that xbox isn't looking at the game <laughs> like maybe there is something that that should be censored but xbox just isn't looking at it well i think the fact that it's rated at, that it got rated m by the esrb and not true. ao true for adults only i think microsoft is seeing that as saying like okay if the esrb does not see anything objectionable with this game then we don't either right it's, it reminds me of do do you remember Back in the PS2 era, uh, BMX Triple X. Yes. So fondly for for, <laughs> for you kids out there, BMX Triple X was a game from Acclaim Studios, Long Island Zone. It was the where, only way we could get porn back in the early yes, 2000s because the whole gimmick of it was you can play as a topless woman and you can uh, and create a character. You can control the size of her bust, and if you're really good at the game, you get to unlock. Uh, videos of strippers from Scores, a uh, strip club in New York, of them doing their thing. Game is shit. Don't play it. But, <laughs> but the the PlayStation Two version was censored. None of that was in the game. Mm. However, the original Xbox and GameCube versions of the game were uncensored. So Nintendo was okay with it. Right. But Sony was not. It was very bizarre. I so remember that. what I'm saying is there Sony has a precedent. There's a history at Sony of weird censorship like this. We won't really know what Martha is dead is being censored for until the game comes out. But I think it's bizarre that this weird ass game is getting this treatment like all these years later. Uh, when is it out? It'll be out March, no, oh, sorry, February 24th uh, on PC and Xbox. Oh, so we'll find out relatively soon. It, well, it's delayed on PlayStation systems. Yeah, well, we'll find out on friggin' uh, if there's anything like crazy when yeah. it comes out for Xbox. Uh, right now, we're going to find out what the hell the Tweet of the Week is. Tweet of the Week! Do it! It's uh this one is by Real Dan Yang. And it says, There's no reason this can't be three, maybe four dudes even. And it's from the Olympics, and it's what is this friggin' sledding? I don't know. And two dudes stacked <laughs> on each other. I think that's just the luge. But why are they is this how it always is? I don't rem I don't know, man. Do you know how many different sledding events there are in the Winter Olympics? Isn't it usually just another, one guy? Why are they? Why are they just? Stacked? I saw another tweet. I was like, I can't. I love watching the Olympus because it's like forty different versions of sledding. <laughs> Yesterday I saw a headline about man's double luge, and today I realized I was a real Olympic event and not an Onion article. So double <laughs> luge. Yeah. They literally just. It's not like there's. It's a two seater. They just stack on top of each other. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, they're shooting down that pipe at like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, normally, and you're just gonna put a dude on top of another dude. Butts to Paul Sack. Right there. 
at least compartments like the bobsled has compartments for each person. True. Uh, and, th and this guy's right. There is no reason this couldn't be three or maybe even four dudes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, uh, someone in the chat just said something. Where was it? Uh, why is it not there anymore? I missed it. So, so somebody said it's got to be really cold for them to do this. <laughs> 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 that was pretty good. Um. Uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna talk to you people very briefly because it is late and we need to leave. Yes. Uh, last week's wolf then. Yes. Yeah, so on the com. Well, that's not it. On the comments from last week's Wolf Den podcast, we have Lula Lunatic who says, I'm totally with you guys on the early Assassin's Creed games. I played the shit out of the Ezio trilogy and three Assassin's Creed 2 was my all time favorite. However, when Black Flag came out, I got halfway through and stopped damn boat stuff. Haven't played any more since. I'm pretty sure I beat four. I didn't. I played a little bit of it. I'm like, all right, this is cool so far. And then, like, because it's, it's you know, on a beach instead of in a city, I kind of get it. And then boat stuff, nope. You hit a certain point in Assassin's Creed 4 where you have to grind the boat stuff. Yeah. If you didn't upgrade your boat the whole game, you hit a point where it forces you to grind boat side missions until you upgrade the boat. Yeah. And that was very fucking annoying. And that's probably yeah. the point where Lula Lunatic stopped. Uh, Sebastian Chubbard says, my mom's about to come out of retirement to play Switch Bowling. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of old people are going to be yes. coming out of the woodwork yes. to get very some excited Nintendo Switch this. sports. Yeah. I'm very excited to play the online ranked against some 90-year-olds. There you go. Show them what's up. I'll show them what's Tell up. them that the planet is ours now. <laughs> CB64 says, hey guys, I just bought a Wii U. Wait, sh oh, what boy. should I play? Well, well make sure you up. buy a bunch of stuff now. Hurry up, dude. <laughs> get some virtual console shit now while you're yeah. at it. And any digital yeah. stuff you want, you get it right now. Immediately. This is a good time to ask. Um, Andrew Cranford says, what, what's your opinion on Gotham Knights Will? Uh, I'm very interested in it. I think it's still coming out this year. Um, so hopefully I'm, I'm ex excited to play it. I'm excited to see what it's all about. Uh, I do not think that Batman is dead in it. I know that's the whole crux of the game. That's the whole impetus for the game. Uh, but there's no way uh, there he's staying dead for long. That's not how Batman operates. And spoiler alert for the stupid Avengers game that Square Enix put out. Captain America ain't dead either. <laughs> I Wait, what's, a big problem with that game. What's that? What is that? What What are you talking about? What? Captain what, America the Avengers dead. game? What, yeah, what is that? Remember, Does he so die the in the fucking game? So in the beginning of the game, there's like the A-Day event where like there's a big catastrophe at Avengers HQ and like everybody blames the Avengers for it and the Avengers have to disband. During that event, they make it seem like Captain America didn't survive the attack. So like they built statues for him and stuff and it's in the trailers and stuff. It's very obvious that something happened to Cap that he died. It's also very obvious that, like, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't have a Captain <laughs> America in the game kill him off in the first 20 minutes and not have you play as him again. Yeah, I so thought, I thought they, you could play as him. <laughs> yeah, no. Obviously, they bring him back, like, four missions before the end. And, you know, you want to know something that's really weird about that game in addition to all the other things that's weird about that fucking game? The costumes that they wear on the cover, mm -hmm. you only get to play as those in the beginning after that you don't have access to them again unless you unlock them and those oh, costumes stupid. are supposed to be the default costumes like i do not have captain america's default costume unlocked in that stupid game that's that that's there's a lot of terrible decisions they made there <sighs> shit i'm not gonna anyway over. melon from last week left a really yes. long post about chrono cross and chrono trigger yeah, so I guess maybe one of us said Chrono Cross was a sequel to Chrono Trigger? I thought it was. Who cares is what I want to know. Chrono it's Cross more of a sequel to Radical Dreamers, which deviated a lot. Trigger fans, don't forget Cross. Cross is awesome, but it's just that it's so different 
from art story to battle systems, it doesn't feel like trigger. All right, I gotta stop. I can't. My brain's melting. I can't do. I can't do JRPG stuff. It's sort of like I guess Alien and Prometheus movies, both cool movies, but as a sequel, Prometheus isn't really what fans were hoped for. You know, is it a good analogy? I don't know, but whatever. It's cool that Radical Dreams. <laughs> Fred, what the fuck, Fred? There could. There wasn't a better comment, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Look, th- thank you, Melon, for clarifying that Chrono Cross isn't really a sequel to Chrono Trigger. Um, but then you say, doesn't... then you compare it to Prometheus and Alien. It's, it still doesn't clear up a lot. Yeah, There's no, still... I'm more confused now. I'm more yeah. confused. So... But it is JRPG stuff, so I don't think you could have explained it better, to be honest. Yeah. All right, notifications. We got Will Wolf. Thank you for the 26 months of support. Hey. Uh, Kanga Stu, thank you for the Prime. Mecha Dragon, thanks for the 245 bits. Hey, Bob, I haven't really given you an update on my learning to draw journey that I started a while ago. Just wanted to let you know that it's still going great so far, and i definitely been getting better by, bit by bit. Thanks for the encouragement. Thank you, Mega Dragon, for the support. Uh, y- as long as you do it often and do it a lot... Uh, and 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 stick with it and 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 keep trying new things uh even if you feel like you're not improving or if you feel like uh uh uh, it still sucks and you want to be better you will eventually be better if you just keep doing it you'll you'll you just have to keep making mistakes until until you start liking what you're doing it's the same way with any skill anything yeah uh Per peer up. Thanks for the two months. Anderson, thank you for the two months. Crim, C- Chris Morantz, thanks for the prime. Chubby Frog, thanks for the 19 months. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 hype. The power of cat girls has no limits. Oh, yeah, I'm so hyped for Xenoblade Chronicles. Bloody FPS, thanks for the four months. Idea for sub goal Bob grows bangs. I can't even grow hair. Yeah, th- <laughs> take it easy on the poor boy. Uh, the Konami man. Thanks for the two months. Thanks for the pod and videos that keep me awake at work. Uh, you know what else would do a good job? Coffee. Yes. <laughs> but thank you for the support. Uh, Duffman. Thanks for the nine months. Keep up the great content, boys. Thanks, dude. Thank you, Duffman. Oh yeah. Uh, we're gonna take a couple from the chat, but we are yeah. very late. Make, so make them go. good, folks. Will, have you ever played Gunman Clive? Bob looked at it on stream yesterday and he said it doesn't look good. Also, guys, I was looking on 3DS eShop and Fire Emblem Warriors is on there for $40. Seems like a lot. Uh, well, no, because isn't that Clive. game not out yet? I don't think I've ever heard of that game. Gunman Clive looks like shit. Fire Emblem Warriors <laughs> is the one they announced last week. $40 uh, is a good deal Emblem, on that. Fire Emblem Warriors... No, what oh, the no. hell? The three, the three hopes is what they announced. Oh, there's already a Warriors game. I didn't know that. Fire Emblem Warriors is uh, sixty bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah, Gunman, Gunman Clive from this right now looks like one of them weird indie games that are weird on purpose. Oh wait, no wait, what the? Oh, it's it's forty dollars. So Fire Emblem Warriors is forty dollars on the three DS. Well, that's yes, that's. That's the price of a full 3DS game. That makes sense. Yeah. I think he might have thought this was the new game too, like what I just thought just now. Maybe. Uh, big money time, Bri Rai. Thanks for the 1,000 bits. I very much appreciate it. Isn't Gunman Clive that $2 collection? It's not $2. It was it's $5 for Gunman Clive 1 and 2 on the Switch. Skycast, thanks for the 250 bits. Did that? Oh, yeah, it did come up. Bob told you I would use my Prime yesterday. Well, thank you, Chris Morantz. I appreciate it. Can you really not burp? No, I can't. I, sometimes it escapes me, but I can't make myself burp. So I just get really bad, like, what do you call it? Uh, Acid reflux? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere said a great where you guide on the Discord a couple weeks ago. Well, oh, like games? I'm sure you could just a lot. You know, if you just Google Wii U games or like at the top, they give you like a bunch of the best games. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I was like that until I went low carb and increased my water intake. Well, I'm definitely not low carb, but uh, I drink a fuck ton of water all, all day. 
Did you, either of you guys try the new Getsu Fumaden? No, I have not. No. Uh, but it does look interesting. Speaking of JRPGs, I saw this one, 13 Sentinels, is that what it's called? I've heard yeah. of that. It looks fucking bonkers. Uh, I saw the anime, uh, a Trash Taste, that anime podcast, they talked about it for two yeah. seconds. It's very much a JRPG. It's only 30 hours. And they said the story was the craziest story they've ever seen in any medium. So I was like, I need to, I need to see this. And they said it's more yeah. confusing than Kingdom Hearts, which I immediately... That's impossible. I immediately... Nothing's more confusing than Kingdom Hearts. I correlated that to uh, Metal Gear. Uh, yeah. And there are, like, mechs and stuff in it. I'm not really fond of the art style, and I don't really know what the freaking gameplay is, but it's a JRPG. So, uh... Right. I feel like if I want to play a JRPG, this might be a good one to start on because it's only 30 hours. I want to kind of play Persona 5, but that's like 100 hours. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Is uh, it 100 hours just doing the story or is it 100 hours with all like the, the bullshit? I don't know exactly. Hold on, let me look it up. Yeah. I don't know. I just guessed 100 hours. Yeah. I mean, Persona 5, I, how I long know- to beat? is 97 and a half hours and that's just vanilla persona 5 oh, and God. the main story if you want to do the bullshit will if you want to be a completionist it's 173 hours <laughs> no yeah i don't want to play that um again 13 cents is only like 30 hours so uh, it's a little enticing, to be honest, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ever gonna friggin' have the time to do that shit. Also, I learned uh, on the same token. Uh, uh, you've heard of that game, uh, Turnip Boy commits tax evasion. No, but go on. <laughs> That's the name of the game, Turnip Boy commits right. tax evasion. That game is three hours. Okay. And I want to play. I downloaded it yesterday because it was like on sale for like eight bucks. So it's only three hours. So I'm down to to try that out. Right. Um. Anyway, I think we gotta leave. Okay. Thanks for hanging yeah, out, everybody. I, I gotta think. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where... You get the show from, folks. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Who shall we raid tonight? Uh, who do we got here? Um, who haven't I raided in a while? Uh, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, so I will probably be streaming on Thursday. I'm on the last level of Ross's World, finally. I took off like a two-year break. I'm the <laughs> last level of Ross's World in Mario Maker. It is very difficult. So come watch watch me use an arcade stick to beat it. Um, Watch Kate. Everybody watch Kate. She's playing Twilight Princess. Uh, a community member here at the channel. Uh, We'll see you all. I'll see you on Thursday. The podcast will see you next week. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, this is is, uh, bye.